Okay, we're going to call this meeting to order at one o'clock. And I think council will uh, probably agree that we have got a really nice group of people here representing the heads of these departments. It's, uh, it's lovely to see the, uh, the type of um, personality we have, the skill that they bring to the table, uh, the, uh, the politeness that they bring to the municipality when they are questioned. And I have noticed a considerable change in this over the past, I'm not gonna say how long, but there certainly is a nice, um, a nice change of attitude. And uh, not that there hasn't always been uh, a positivity about this, uh, this group, but I think the additions that have taken place in the last six months to a year have certainly been, uh, as far as I'm concerned, have been, have been a treat. So Donna, with your leadership, I can't help but uh, compliment the whole works of you. And I think as council, let's give them a hand. That's it, you're all fired. <laughs> okay, if we could have um, the meeting called to order, we, we've done that. And Kirk, if you could conduct the roll, please. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, are you present? I am. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Lambsett? Present. And Deputy Mayor Windover is absent. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer. Present. I don't know if you guys all want to yell. <laughs> or for staff, we have Steve Brockbank, Director of Emergency Services. Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities. Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works. Present. Barb Waldron, Director of Building and Planning and CBO. Present. Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk. Present. Chelsea Carpenter, Waste Public Works Coordinator. Present. And Corey Campbell, Foreman. is self-muted, but he's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services, Clerk of Traffic. Thank you. Now we're gonna remind council members of the obligation to clear any pecuniary interests that you may have now or at any time during the meeting. If we get a motion to approve the agenda, Councillor Lambshead, Councillor Franzen, all in favor, motion is carried. Okay, Donna. Budget summary. Thanks. Thank you and through you. Uh, I would uh, like to agree and thank uh, all uh, staff, department heads and their staff for the work on the budget. I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate it. I know they're all really busy with 2021 initiatives. So I appreciate their work for sure. So the, the first slide we have is the draft budget summary for 2022. As a reminder, Budgeting is based on the previous year's level of service and any requests that increase that, you will see individual reports uh, in individual budgets for that purpose. So, um, and every dollar collected by the municipality, 44 cents stays here. So we did put out a budget feedback request through our social media portals and received one. And that was, again, to look at the grants that are, are given annually and a look at perhaps a better process in awarding those. So I just wanted to make council aware of that. So this slide shows that the increase in the municipal budget under this draft proposal is 6,855,127.68 or 47.69% increase. And that's largely due to the building of the dedicated mechanic uh, recreation of facilities building in 2022 but you will see that there is a zero percent levy increase associated with that because we are using a lot of reserve monies some development charges and there is a recommendation this year to undertake some debt and I'll talk to that further on in the pro in the presentation so the actuals that you see in your budget package today are as of November 4th and just a reminder, there's lots of work still to be done in 2021 with lots of bills to be paid. So those are not the final actuals for the year. And um, yeah, just to reiterate the importance of putting money aside through asset management planning and this council has really very much allowed for that, which allows for us to use those reserve monies for the bill next year and not impact the tax levy because of that. So. Um, so I thought I'd also let you know the uh, reassessment for uh, the province for MPAC. 
has been delayed again. So 2022 and 2023, we will be using the January 1, 2016 current value assessment, which is why you see in the scenario below the freeze in rate, because the assessments will be the same. The only difference will be growth. And I am still waiting for the growth figures. I should have them shortly from MPAC. But currently, early projections look around 1%. So anything that is growth related, we will be able to reduce any amounts required through the tax levy by that additional growth as well. So Donna, I can I, can I ask a question? Sure. And, and maybe maybe we should set up whether or not we ask as, as it goes along or if we try to hold questions. But if impact is doing this, when they eventually kick in, will they back charge us? So through you, um, I think that the thinking is there's going they're going to look at how properties are assessed because yes, you are correct. The date that was to be updated was January 1, 2020. So what a property would essentially sell for on the market with property specifics as well built in there. So no, there wouldn't be any back charge, but there could be some very large increases in assessment because the sales have, would have warranted that. So they won't go back. They're freezing it now. I think it's in recognition of the pandemic and just an overall thinking. I think they're looking at how to reassess and, and maybe looking at that process, but no, they wouldn't back charge, but there could be some very large increases going forward, right? Because you're looking at a four year update for sales. If you did January 1, 2020, based on the sales we see when we do ownership changes, for instance, properties are going for three or four times what they're assessed for currently. But if everything goes up, then the mill rate comes down. Usually, yes, depending <laughs> on the, usually. usually, depending on the budget requirements, but that's usually the premise that you have more of an assessment base to spread the costs over. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I've talked about the growth, so I think we can move to slide two. And if there are any questions, please ask them along the way. I think that's better, so if, unless there's any questions on that slide. So out of that 0% increase that this draft budget um, gives, there are some additional staff increases. And these we will talk to in individual budgets once again, but I wanted to provide for you an overview of those ex exact amounts and what that would do to that 0% levy increase. So you would have an additional 2.24% increase based on the requests. The requests I've listed there, there are kind of a message this year is we're looking for three new staff. The amounts that I've given include benefits, which we're about 31% right now for a full-time staff with owners and health benefits and about 20% for those that don't have those benefits. So once again, we will speak to this further on, but just to let you know, every 100, 101,465.67 increase in the tax levy increases is a 1% increase in the tax rate or $3.83 on every 100,000. Carol? Thanks. Uh, Donna, just a quick, uh, turn me back there. Sorry, I'm not going to understand all that. <laughs> yes, I would like to know that. See all my silly Carol, you're not good. I'll just do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um, uh, just a question on the Galway Hall kitchen renovations. Is there not a reserve that could cover that and or like a capital reserve of some kind as opposed to going directly to the taxpayers? So through you, we do have, we don't have a reserve specific to that facility. That's, that's that amount. Right. The recreation and facilities reserve is kind of a new one that we're building. So we, we don't really have those funds there, but we have talked about the potential of looking for grants for that work potentially, but Dylan can maybe speak to a, a bit about that. But we could we could look at the use of reserves, perhaps, you know, some kind of energy if, if it's efficiencies in that regard or accessibility. Right. We do have some monies there, but ideally it would be nice to try to get some grant monies for those. But often grants, they come with a lot of work beforehand to get ready to apply for certain grants. So right. But we can talk about that a bit further if you're okay with it. Okay, thanks. Just want to flag that. Yep. So anything else on this slide? Okay, so I think we'll move 
right into the first part of the budget today, which will be the capital budget. So the overview that I have provided for you, I will let actually individual departments uh, speak to that in their presentation. So that one is just for your information, but this projection document, you will see, um, just to let you know as well, we do know because it is used for the capital budget, the OMPF funding for 2022, the municipality will be getting $1,353,900, which is up $3,600 from, from 2021. So that's good. We always use those funds towards capital. So that is included in any budget calculations for you. So the overview of the 2022 draft capital budget shows a large increase, 167% increase, but once again, that's due to the build of a new dedicated mechanics and recreation of facilities. Um, and the levy requirement is actually down 4.10% in this scenario, because once again, we are utilizing a lot of reserve funds next year. So if we can go right to the next slide, that would be great. And our first capital budget, um, presentation from staff today is from Public Works and I think Evan and Chelsea please thank you thank you madam or thank you Donna through you uh, madam mayor to the council um, I'm going to start off as the biggest number um, that we're looking at is the new the new dedicated mechanics facility at the 49 depot um, as Chelsea has been the lead on this project, um, I'm going to let her sort of give you guys an update on where we're at on the project, what we're looking at for 2022, um, and then between herself and myself, we'll answer any questions. Through us. Thank you. And for you, Madam Mayor, so just to provide Council with an update on the new dedicated mechanics facility, um, the preliminary design work is now 100% complete. Um, the detailed design and engineering is at a 94% completion. And this includes the building design, structural design, civil design, electrical design, and mechanical design. The next steps will be the final design and the construction documents. And we are currently on track to tender for construction in early 2022 and construction to start in the spring of 2022. So if there's any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Great. Moving along quite well. Okay, thanks, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Well done. So I think Evan's going to update you on the project for, for 2022. Thank you, yes. Now I'm gonna speak directly to the other capital projects that Public Works has um, planned for this year. Um, the first one is uh, a carryover from 2021. Um, it's the surface treatment work that was unable to be completed. Um, I provided that update at the previous council meeting. I'm just explaining, unfortunately, due to the type of summer that it was um, with the wet weather, um, the construction was delayed. We do plan on completing that 2021 work, um, which was delayed to next year with the 2022 work. And we are hoping to have that done in early uh, June, um, July, if need be, but get that all done this year, sort of thing, or next in the 2022 season and get that done completed early. Um, the next one we're looking at hot mix asphalt. So this is sort of your typical with the two roads we're looking at is Saunders Road um, off Philrick and then Bessie Avenue South off Highway 36 here. Um, fairly straightforward uh, projects for these hot mix asphalt roads. The reason, um, the, the, the reason for choosing hot mix asphalt in those areas is when you use that type of uh, material, it extends the asset light and it gives you a full 25 years instead of comparatively to the surface treatment where it's only seven years. So theoretically you can put the asphalt down and then you don't have to worry about it for too long of a period until you have to start doing some pothole patching um, once it gets to the 15, 20 year sort of mark. Um, we also have the Salmon Lake culvert replacement. Um, this is a very major culvert replacement as you can see budgeted for 120,000. This is the reason um, we chose to do this culvert at this time. It was identified within the 2022 or 2021 um, structures inspection report um, that it needed to be replaced. Um, this, this is a main culvert that if this culvert would fail, you'd lose the main access point to many of the Crystal Lakes and you'd only be able to access from 507 and then from 49 on the other side. 
so this is a major project that we would tender and go through that process and have an outside contractor complete the work. Um, I've been already uh, had some preliminary meetings with Armtech, which is one of the main culvert suppliers to look at different technologies um, that we could utilize in this scenario uh, as sometimes your standard culvert replacement in, impacts the surrounding environment more. So sometimes you can look at different ways to sort of save money and save space. Uh, and then obviously we have the 2022 um, surface treatment roads. And then I noticed with the 2021 roads, there was roads in Buckhorn to be surface treatment. Um, the idea is that we might look at doing at, at a similar cost as a asphalt because the surface treatment won't set as well in that area. Um, we have pre-approvals for two trucks in 2023. Um, the reason for the early pre-approval is unfortunately with COVID. This is one of the issues we're finding as many people are, you need replacement parts or replacement vehicles. You're, you're waiting a lot extended period of time. So right now they're telling where the larger tr vehicles, tractors and uh, tandems that they're 18 to 20 months. So we're hoping to start to tender here shortly. And then we're also looking for a pre-approval on a, it's a single axle type of vehicle um, as it's the same reason that the lead times are longer. So we're looking to get these these balls rolling because I can't see the lead time shortening anytime soon. They're only going to extend and extend. And then also just to add, I, you may have noticed there's new sand slash salt domes. Um, these are to be included in that new uh, dedicated mechanics facility. Um, just from what I have from my professional opinion as an engineer, I've done some inspections, looked at sort of the different uh, HVAC units that are working or not working in those domes. And that's causing uh, causing an increased amount of moisture around the wood and moisture and wood is not a good combination so this has led to an incre quicker deterioration i think than initially anticipated um, so just from what i believe and i think the structures reports have sort of spoke to this as well as that these domes need to be replaced and my belief is if you're doing a construction project on one site let's do all the work at once instead of doing more work one or two years later and then damaging some asphalt or something that didn't need to be done. We can tie it all in together and make it make it a good, um, something that we can be proud of as a municipality. Uh, and then you have the typical just gravel crushing and that's just our maintenance program of ensuring that the gravel roads are topped up and they're on uh, different five, four, five, six year programs, um, just depending on the type of traffic that they receive. Um, so at this time, if you guys have any questions, I imagine that was a lot. I do apologize. It's my first budget meeting, but I wanted to get all that information out there to you. And then if you guys have any questions, I'm here to answer. Okay, Council. Carol. Remember, um, I think this is Donna. She's hiding. Did you see that? <laughs> Sorry, good night, Council. Um, just a question. Uh, I see we're using some of the gas tax funding toward one of the reconstruction. Is it reasonable for us to be using more of the gas tax funding for a couple of those other projects and then less of the tax? Uh, so through you, um, I was going to speak a bit about the gas tax funding. So um, we could, we could, we are adherent. We have to use gas tax funding within five years under it's called the banking limit. We are adherent to that. But uh, quite frankly, we are able now to use gas tax for fire buildings. So my hope was to keep some money aside for the future builds for the fire. Gotcha. And because we already have a 0% increase in the levy, I think we've managed to accommodate spending well already, but we can certainly use, there is definitely gas tax funding there for us to use, but my hope is to save it for the, that future build. And if I could just add that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you for that. Um, and although the tax increase right now is 0%, I suspect that will change as we get some requests from committees, et cetera. So um, if we can also apply that and we have that work if we need it, um, that might be a good strategy. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Just wondering if we kind of know the useful lifespan of those domes at 49. You know, it's a million dollars to replace. I wouldn't want to speak through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Liam said, I wouldn't want to speak out a turn without uh, having hard evidence in front of me, but I would like to say that um, in the range of 50 years, it would be an expected 50 plus 
And I think it's also the, the domes have, as like all technology, they've improved. And one of the issues with the domes is you're dealing with moisture and dealing with a sand salt mix and salt and things don't mix well. Um, so my, my expectation would be a minimum of 50 years, possibly greater. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Just a quick question on the culvert of Salmon Lake. Yep. Whereabouts on Salmon Lake is, is that? So do you know where White Lake drain or drains Fort Lake Fort Eskew drains into White Lake there? Yep. It's called yep. the, the Causeway. Yeah. That's that culvert right in there. Okay. <laughs> and, and and what's the lifespan of a culvert? Uh, culvert is typically 50 to 75 years, depending on the type of material you choose. And that's one of the reasons that I've gone oh through you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, typically, they have different coating options. So the one coating option that I've looked at is based on um, Arm Texas advice that it's a 75 year um, useful life. Okay. So that's long. I should be long gone by then, hopefully. <laughs> because there's a lot of acidity, acidity in the water. Exactly, there. and that's what they they add, and then they also account for the road salt as well. They can do a coating that can help extend that life. So. Okay, great. Okay, Evan, I think you've uh, I think you've done yourself proud. Thank you, Mayor Clark. Now, a couple of questions that I have. The uh, the yeah. cost right now for the premium, the uh, the asphalt must be a really really hard thing to try to cost into the future because being a petroleum product, it's probably fluctuating just like everything else is. Right. So this budget, as far as as uh, resurfacing, is dependent upon energy prices at this time, I would assume. Yes, but we also build into our budget enough contingency that allows, unless it's a great, great increase that we can sort of work within that um, increase of the, because there's a, an in the index that they use for the asphalt that they tells you based on what the market prices are. And use, using that, we have enough contingency that I believe, I don't know if Donna has any different thoughts, but yes. um, there's enough contingency built in that allows that sort of market shift. I wouldn't say 10 years down the road it allows us, but for the next year, we have a good enough idea just from where it's going to this go. year's market is. My other question is, these domes are a work of art. So if there'd be any way to at least save one of those, yes. if we ever do get a historical um, society moving in this area, one of those should be kept. Because when you walk into one of those, you think you're into a cathedral. <laughs> So I don't know how you could uh, how you could uh, preserve one of those, but um, I was I was absolutely flabbergasted when I went into it. I've taken two or three people in to see them, but that construction is absolutely has all has all council seen those gone into those mm -hmm. into those domes. You Anybody from council would like to tour? I'd love to. <laughs> Been in a few. Yeah, don't you? Isn't it something when you walk into those domes and you see the way they're put together? Whoever dreamt that up? No, it's interesting the different um, technologies now. They have one that's almost like a Quanzi hut, so it's instead of being round, it's actually flat edges with would be like probably a decagon. I don't know. I haven't I haven't done my grade five geometry recently, but <laughs> something close to that. Or I know they've also have the uh, the large sheds. I've seen them build those as well, where they're the rectangular. So there's different options, but that's definitely something we could look into for sure. Well, just the keeping of one of them just as to be nothing but a historical. Exactly. I mean, put something in. <laughs> I'll put my office right at the top. I'll go play my guitar that I don't have. Okay, uh, any other questions? I think everybody, Donna, did you want to comment or? No, you're thank okay. You for you. Thank you. So the next in the capital budget, if you guys don't mind wiping it down a bit, that'd be great. Thank you. Is Dylan for recreation and facilities. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, you've got my uh, my capital budget here. Um, some features of this particular one, um, you'll notice the land improvement budget is up fairly significantly. This is due entirely um, due to the, the addition of the $66,000 approved to the EDAC committee in 2021, um, since it's 
you know, entirely basically for Odenang Park. It's really a capital um, park improvement. So they just done to move those those funds over there. Um, the you know, it's other than that, it's just our standard uh, asset management program um, funding required to to keep things up. Um, there's my portion of the uh, new dedicated mechanics facility included in there, some of which about a third of it um, coming from development charges. Um, future pickup replacement. <clears throat> One thing I will note from 2021 is you will see the uh, new to fleet pickup has not been spent because we have not received it yet. Um, I've been keeping in contact with the the uh, supplier, but it uh, keeps getting moved back and back in the line. So you may see that come forward into 2022, but we've obviously already raised those funds, so it shouldn't it shouldn't affect the um, levy. But we might have to bring those that budget forward. Um, uh, just an update the columbarium. Also, you'll see no funds spent there. Um, Matt updated me this morning that uh, they're expecting within the next week or two for it to be installed. I guess there was a shipping delay in it, but it's uh, expected any time to be done. Um, done there. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer that. Richard? Uh, this, this is a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan, it has to do with economic development oh. advisory committee. I know it has a moving target. Mm -hmm. I knew that some of the monies in there represent specific things yes. that are being brought forward yes. can you just identify sure. those because i i'm expecting they will bring others forward so i just want to know what's in it sure um I, I i'm going to try to just go off the cough off my head here <laughs> um <laughs> i don't have that in front of me uh the pavilion is definitely probably the big one in there um there was uh, in the neighborhood of 30,000, I think they might have done, and we're kind of estimating that's going to be closer to the 80 to 100 um, based on our preliminary. I have reached out to the contractor that's actually did the design work for and the replacement of the siding at Galway. So they've given me a proposal for um, doing construction drawings um, and pricing um, and um, you know assisting with the minor variance. Uh, process for for that uh, pavilion and then once we've got a little bit more firmer numbers we can um, adjust that accordingly um, as well we've got the dock we've got prices in the neighborhood um, for the the 60 by 10 and to 8 by 10 foot ramps in the neighborhood of uh, low 30s to low 60s um, for the for the dock so I believe that was um, maybe supposed to come back for council's consideration there so um, you know, that's a $30,000 dock is getting you pretty much all pressure treated with floats and the, you know, the 60,000 is looking at like aluminum frame with, uh, uh, like a plastic composite decking. So a little bit more life out of that. Um, and then we've also got, uh, the garden, uh, that we're, we're looking at, uh, putting in opposite of the boat ramp. Um, there was a bike repair station, I believe as well. Um, which I believe Chair Reed was looking after getting that ordered. I'm not sure where he stands on that yet, um, but we'll uh, we'll definitely we've got a meeting with them, Donna and I, coming up here very shortly, so we can uh, touch base on where that is. That is there. Um, there is the uh, Muskoka chair, which has been on order for quite some time. The the supplier is also quite behind in their delivery dates on it, and I'm. Um, Anything else is escaping me at this and moment. Sign? There's, there's a sign in there. Do you have a sign? There might be a sign in there. Yes, Dave was looking at a but sign. Not I the think. playground. Not the playground. The playground is not. So the playground, it's we're in a bit of a, a holding pattern, I guess, with the playground. Um, council's direction was that it was self-funded, um, and so we're, you know, we got denied for the one grant. So we're expecting to keep looking for grants unless council wanted to direct another avenue for for that so if i can just follow it again this is it's all very confusing to me because it, there's the committee and then there's you so <laughs> if let's say we have thirty thousand in there for the gazebo and mm -hmm. it turns out it's only eighty thousand or sixty thousand yes. um, does the committee have the discretion to use the, the let's say they have 100 do they have the discretion to use that however they want or do they need to come back to council to prioritize uh, I'm a little unclear as to how this moves forward. And maybe we shouldn't be discussing it now. Um, and I, if, if not, then I'm happy to take that 
question. Right. So Another thank one. you through you. I would suggest maybe that's appropriate. Um, we have talked before that it is somewhat confusing how that is all structured. So I would say if if there was a budget awarded that included several items, we've had it before where things were more expensive than we thought, we would typically request they come to council, maybe through Lynn, and just say it's more expensive and we're going to have to change and not do something as opposed to, but we haven't seen the request yet. And yes, it, it appears the numbers are a lot larger than the 66,000 we put in there. So there'll have to be some decisions for sure on that. Sorry, so just to clarify, so there's 66,000 in that, that's for EDAC and the rest is for AMP? Yes, so that's still in through you, uh, typical budget and the initiatives that he would typically do. But I did add the 66,000 in there Got because it. it is appropriate in my mind that that goes into Dylan's budget because that's a land improvement under the Recreation and Facilities mm -hmm. Department. Okay, great, thanks. Anyone else? Um, Council I, I did have a, a question about the, the dock. Um, so that's contingent on approval from uh, the agencies that are the, the waterway agencies. So through you, Mayor, it's uh, the Trans Severn has approved the the dock, the the ten by sixty okay. by eight by ten, like the two ramps. Okay, they've approved it as that. It's it's funding. That's basically if, if council wants to move forward, they're going to have to. Okay. Have to fund it. My preference would be the aluminum dock. Uh, I think that it makes the most sense not having big, big water big. pressure treated in the water. Because the pressure tree is only going to last maybe 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other year you get it, they double the life of it. Yeah. So we, you can get, um, I believe, the one price that we had got for aluminum with uh, just decking pressure treated was uh, was about 50,000 or so for that. And then you go up to 60, you can get the plastic and the Yep. And they're basically forever at yep. that point in time. Uh, it would be the lighter plastic. Uh, I, I heard that if you use the heavier plastic, it's it's a harder to float. I would imagine it would it would yep. be more difficult to float the heavier yep. plastic. Yeah, yep. I, I haven't. I'm not. I'm fairly new to docks. I'm not <laughs> much of a lake goer, so no, I'm learning. It's like, the local building supply. Yeah. and they recommended that you you go with the, the lighter, cheaper material. Okay. Uh, of the composite. Okay. And they said that uh, the other, it, it's not cost effective if you're looking over a longer mm -hmm. period of time. Okay. That's good. Good. You know, we're definitely, it's definitely something we have to tender um, at the, the dollar value it's at. So we can work out all those specs for sure. For sure. Okay. I have got a couple of questions. And I think one probably builds a little bit on, uh, on uh, uh, Councillor Armstrong's uh, comments. Advisory committees, in my view, when they were set up, were just that. They were advisory committees. They came to council, and council had the had the ability to say yay or nay, change from one thing or another. And I kind of sometimes wonder when the advisory committees have grown beyond what their what their purposes were. So I guess what I'm saying is, we council is elected to make a decision. Committees are appointed to give council. Uh, and staff um, information that they gather. So having said that, I've got a couple of problems with some of the advice that's being that's being handed over from the Parks and Rec Committee or the um, Economic Development Committee. I see the uh, a gazebo as taking a tremendous amount of money. It's large. It's probably overkill in the design of it. And I see the playground, which will probably attract numerous uh, more usage than what the than what uh, the gazebo will. I'm not saying the gazebo should be should be put on the sidelines, but I'm saying if there's money to be spent on one or the other, I would be inclined to put that money into into a playground. We have nothing like that. It's the only playground anywhere on the Trent system and we're spending money putting a dock in. But if you just look at the local um, at the local situation, the school doesn't have a playground for junior kids anymore. I know initially it, I brought it forward as being uh, self-funded. That was a mistake on my part. 
because it had been suggested to me that four or five of the quarries would get together and uh, donate the money toward that. And for a serious second thought, I got looking at the amount of quarries that now have requests into the township for one thing or another, and I decided it was only smart of me to back away from the quarry situation. Having said that, we do have the money to build a, um, to build a uh, playground. So I would like to see the playground put into the budget. And down the way, uh, I won't be sitting here at the time, but down the way, I'd like to see uh, another playground at Sandy Beach because we are extremely short of activities for, uh, for young people. And I think, it's, I think it's important. If we go ahead with the playground at the Odenang Park, again, the composite material, something that's very bright and colorful that shows up from the road, uh, occupies parents while they're trying to do some shopping or go to a restaurant or whatever. But basic, just to have something for kids. So I don't know what the feeling of council is, but um, I do know when we're looking at this kind of money for a, for a, um, a gazebo that maybe something a little bit more conservative there, some of that money could be transferred into a playground. Comments? Can I build on that? Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, Ben. And I, the process is broken <laughs> in terms of, of the, these projects. May I suggest that we, we go back to that committee and say we have X dollars in the budget right now, $66,000. So tell us how you would prioritize the use of that. And if you need additional funds and bring that forward, that would come forward to council, who would then shuffle the priorities, do whatever they need to do. Uh, and in the budget meeting, we decide whether those additional requests can be accommodated. And then it sits with council. Because I'm afraid we've got this tug of war going on between the committee and council, and we need a tight process to ensure that you know, you know how many dollars we're talking about and for what, and that that comes before council to make a final decision. Is that is that, is that a good build on what yep. you're trying to get at? I think so. Okay, Councilor Limeset. Yeah, and I think we possibly should be looking at other revenue streams here. I mean, this could be publicly funded. I mean, there's there's lots of people that would really like a beautiful playground in Udenang Park. So there's, there's op there is opportunity for other revenue streams. I think. But having said that, mm -hmm. where are your priorities? We need to get priorities. Yes. I, I, I feel the gazebo would be a, a, a quite a benefit to uh, to the village of Buckhorn. Would be which? Would be quite a, uh, it would uh, uh, help the, the town of Buckhorn. It, it would be uh, uh, something important for the village of Buckhorn. Okay, yes. I was just saying, let's have that discussion and debate when we get the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the priorities in the budget yeah. from the committee. So it's out there. We can think about it yeah. and we can bring it I, back. I did want to make com one comment about the playground. I, I can imagine how people would feel having a playground that's so close to water there and so, so close to deep water. Uh, I, I, I'm wondering about the live issue and uh, and how fearful parents are going to have to get uh, be on that playground. Okay, noted. All right, are we ready to move on from this discussion? Was there anything else on Dylan's uh, wish list there that anybody wants to talk about? Thank you, Dylan. Well done. Thank you. So the next, uh, the library, there isn't any capital work planned for 2022. Um, the administration, we do have the vehicle for the uh, building department, building and planning department that's already been approved by council. And we have some funding in there for IT and the live streaming, continued live streaming of council meetings. So that's status quo. Is there any questions on the administration? Not much there. I thought you were building a truck, so we didn't have to buy one. Oh, it says building okay. truck. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. 
Um, so yes, the, the next one would be to fire service, emergency service. Please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, before you, you have my budget package as well. Um, we have a, a new pickup truck has already been pre-approved, but uh, as mentioned in the past uh, budgets, uh, they're talking it'll be March at least before we get the truck and we already we already ordered it and tendered for it and all that good stuff. So that's just for a, a regular F-150, so to speak. So um, our bigger trucks like uh, Public Works has spoke of, our new tanker that we ordered, we won't see until approximately March of 23. So um, I was speaking with Donna this morning, just some of our loose equipment alone could be up to a year to receive if we bought it today, so to speak. So um, I'm not sure how that's gonna make our, our budgets look in the future, but um, with that being said, if there's any questions regarding capital budget, I'd be happy to answer them. Question. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's almost not a budget question, but but, are there any exposures because we're going to have to wait that long for some of this equipment, Steve? No, through you, Madam Mayor, there will there won't be. We still have the equipment. It's just it's time. It has a life expectancy. All our equipment does. So that's we just try and stick with that. So we don't have breakdowns or repairs or, or that type of stuff. But no, there there shouldn't be any any lack of service or any of that type of stuff. But good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Steve, would you like to give a little bit of an overview in terms of how your job in the last year or two has changed? I don't think the average person has any idea what the fire department is doing these days. And I think it would be, I think it would be helpful for us to, to hear some of this. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, yes, I could talk for days on something like that. In the last year, it's changed definitely because I became the chief um, and then COVID hit. So I'd like to say it hasn't been a real fair chance to, to get started with what we thought we were gonna be able to accomplish, but uh, it's there's just more demand out there. And I think all, all staff could speak to that. There's way more demand from people and they want their answers yesterday and not they, there's no such thing as taking messages or, or waiting for an answer today. So. And our population is greater, call volumes up. Other than that, it's day to day. Um, I could give a, a full overview to council anytime or, or to move like any after today. I don't know if we want to talk about it all today or not, but I'd be happy to if that's what you wish. But I think in the future, I think we should set some time aside to do that because I know the opioid has taken its toll on, uh, on the responses that you have and also the difference between the way the county deals with uh, with the funding uh, and through and through the way that the, the provincial government, where in your particular case, we are totally funded by the municipalities. And this is something I know we should go to, uh, to uh, uh, good roads with because it's extremely unfair for the, for the municipalities to pick up what the uh, ambulance services are doing in the city. And that's basically what you guys are doing. Through you, Madam Mayor, it's it's this level of service that, that uh, council would like to provide to the municipality. So if we wanna continue with the level of service that we provide, we train to a higher standard for medical training and time responses mm -hmm. and, and that type of stuff. So the more service we would like, we wanna provide to our taxpayer, the more training, the more time, the more finances, the more burden on the taxpayer, but they can provide the better service. So because we're farther out in the country, so to speak, we have a, a greater wait time for ambulance. So we provide that service. In the in the interim. Yeah. Question? It's really not a budget question, but it's my concern as always is the demand on our volunteers. If it's a Growing population. It's we're, we're sustaining a larger population. It seems like forever now, and uh, it's, it's got to be a very big demand on our volunteers. Absolutely. Yes. 
We, we had the ambulance come twice to our home over the past year, and uh, they were so complimentary of our fire service. They said it was one of the best in the area, one of the best in the area. Great. Good so, yeah, that was quite a compliment yes. coming from ambulance attendants. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Steve. Yep, no problem. Thank my staff. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you are the <coughs> you are the head honcho. <laughs> but through you, Madam Mayor, that's the service that we provide. Therefore, yeah. we have to train to a higher standard, and yeah. it costs more, and it is more yeah. time consuming and such. But that goes with our whole level of service that we provide. So I think they were comparing it to the city of Fort Lauderdale. Like said we have a much higher standard <laughs> than the, they do in the city. Everything is compared to them. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Unless uh, there's other questions. Okay, thanks for that. So that finishes the, the capital budget. The next, there is a report that I have for you. Uh, and this report speaks to future borrowing as well as an update on the facility replacement recommendations. So as council are aware, we've had discussions that we are considering debt as part of this budget. And I have had some early discussions with Infrastructure Ontario, as well as our financial institution. And we're well-versed to obtain debt. We're in a solid financial position. The interest rates are low. And there is a process already in place that we've implemented a few years ago to be ready for that. So we have the policy in place. There will be some, if council are on board as well, some future reports coming to you. Basically, we'll have the firm that uh, we, the lender come as well and do a presentation to council. I think that's appropriate. But uh, yeah, just to get some feedback and, and approval that we proceed and look at debt as a solution for funding. So that's kind of the first part of this report. The second part is, as council are aware, we did through a working group come up with a 10-year uh, facility replacement plan. And based on discussions with Steve and Evan, we're looking, and Chelsea, we're looking to um, amend that plan at this time if council are on board with doing that. And we can just kind of go over a couple of things. So one of the, the main things was originally we were going to do the design of the new joint fire and public works building in Buckhorn in 2021. But I'm being told it's too early to do that as far as design work. Uh, because of changes potentially in the building code. So we were also going to do a new depot in Galway that had two bays, that was the plan. And we're now looking to delay that build. And in early 2027, um, we would construct a new facility or we would plan for a new facility and construct it in 2028. And the thinking there is that there can be a joint structure for fire and public works that would work better. Um, we also, there was a plan in 2021 to do an addition for the dome in Cavendish. And we're looking to delay that addition in favor of a joint structure in Cavendish. So early 2025 in Q1 with construction in 2026. And then of course, one of the initiatives was to have the uh, Recreation and Facilities Department move into the existing 49. And we aren't able to do that based on the condition assessment that was undertaken. So yes, we're just looking for support from council to change the timeframes potentially. And in that would be uh, support to bring back further reporting on the specifics of that. Um, okay, uh, Cavendish. Was that not one of the ones that we determined that needed to have something done because there is no facility there for the roads? So through you, I'm going to let Evan, if you don't mind coming and speaking to the Cavendish, please. Through you, Madam Mayor. So yes, the Cavendish, it is my understanding that the Cavendish uh, site was approved however there was some delays due to the uh, i think there was a minor variance that we had to complete if Chelsea can confirm that so there's some of that process um and then by the time that i had come on um, i was sort of discussed between steve and myself um, i think previously there wasn't as much communications between department heads and the work that was going to be completed um, moving forward my 
type of leadership is to work together as a team, even just not public works, but as a whole in the municipality. So we, myself and Steve have had multiple discussions um, on how we can do work because we, we identify both him and both fire and public works needs work at basically all our depots other than the new fire hall out here. Um, so it was decided that we could, we could we could wait until later dates. So when we do do that work, it's not just a lean to, it's a pro proper garage. And then it'd be connected with the fire hall. So then it's you, you save, saving on HVAC, you can have proper heating. There would be washrooms available through that building if our public works guys would need it. Um, we do have facilities up in Cavendish right now that we can continue to provide the level of service that we've been providing all this for the previous year. So the level of service wouldn't be impacted. Um, it's more of thinking forward and thinking if we're doing these larger projects, why are we each doing projects by ourselves? Let's work together. Let's try to save the township a little or the municipality a little bit of money. Um, well, what happens to the individual who has to work out of there? So he doesn't directly work out of it. There still be the sand is there's a sand shed there. He works out of the Buckhorn Depot is where that that tandem um, snowplow vehicle comes from. So then all of the snowplowing and everything in Cavendish is is out of Buckhorn? Yes, and that's the way it's been. There was one year that they had, is my understanding that there was one year that they tried to do at the Cavendish and they found that there was an excessive amount of breaks um, to the to the tandem because when you're bringing it back to Buckhorn, you have the pressure washer there as well as the properly heated building. Um, so that's the one thing you can wash the truck and also make sure the truck stays warm. Where if it was in Cavendish at the lean to, it'd still be cold or frozen um, and then that's when you get into the issues with the hydraulic lines when you go to fire up the truck at four o'clock in the morning in minus 30 weather that's when things start to break and then you'd also face a delay of that truck's brakes in Cavendish while the mechanics in Buckhorn so now the mechanic has to go from Buckhorn all the way up to Cavendish whereas if he starts the truck in Buckhorn and there's an issue the mechanics are already there so you're not losing that delay time of him responding to the service call yeah because that <laughs> Um, Terry, I don't think that was our understanding, was it? Because our understanding was he was putting the chains and everything on that vehicle in the cold up there. Yeah. So I think... Through I think, you, I think that's still the yeah. Yes, yes, the, cha the chains would be put on up there because you wouldn't want to no, run the chains the truck, up the 507. Is the truck left up there and then brought back to Buckhorn? No, the truck's left in Buckhorn, yeah, like so. I said, within the heated garage. But if he needs to do, and that's that's the idea with the joint fire hall facilities, is we're not building a public works depot up there. We're building a garage that's going to be heated large enough that you could easily drive in the tandem, no problem, close the garage door if you need to chain up, do any minor work or greasing on even the loader, then you can do it in that garage okay. and then it'd be taken care of that. Yeah, way. that's my, my, say my understanding is he was out there in the cold doing this, so obviously that's not correct. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. A couple of questions, and I, I kind of deferred to the working group who are more familiar with this, but uh, two things. So that would mean a delay in having a heated place to put the chains on in Cavendish for another four years. So I think that was a, an issue that, again, I would refer back to the working group as to their intent there. The second thing is we were told from, I think, it, because of the geography of the uh, area up in Galway, that they would not be able to build a joint fire and public works. I think all agree that's the most efficient way to go. But have we learned something different? Well, I think now means that is a possibility. Through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Armstrong. So that was, I think, initially it was discussed. Just looking at what they have here is this discussion of having two bays. Public works has a different viewpoint, as we would only need the one bay. And with that smaller print footprint, we would be able to accommodate both public works and fire. Because you're not building a depot, you're just building more of a garage that's going to be heated so you can keep things warm. But it's not building an actual full size depot. Because right now, up in Galway, there's a two bay. There's, there's a depot, a full depot up there. And we wouldn't be replacing it with a full depot, more of just a garage on sort of on the back of the fire hall sort of thing. Okay. And again, to the working group in terms of Cavendish, I'd, I'd ask for your input. Mm -hmm. that, that was the concern that we have a municipal employee laying under a truck at minus 28 trying to put a chain. That's, that was what the recommendation to have something temporary even there was one of the ideas that so that he's not out in the weather putting chains on the truck. 
I mean, that's a, that's a substantial delay. We're talking five years of delay here. But that's more operation. Well, I think we've raised the uh, I think we've raised the subject, mm -hmm. and we'll see how how the plans come, what our options are. But I know our, I know our many whatever wherever things changed or didn't change. I know that was our concern was that there wasn't any any kind of a shelter for the person who worked out of there. Just to clarify that, there, are we making a decision on this new proposal for timing of facilities, or is it just FYI and there will be a later point in time to do it? Because if, if we're making that decision today, I think we should process it more. If it's going to come back at a later time, then fine. Kevin? So, sorry. <laughs> no, it's your report. <laughs> so, for you, the recommendation today is that council support staff coming back with additional information on that to support that change uh, and also to uh, proceed with borrowing options in the future as well. So, yes, we would be looking to have the, a further report come back on that. Well, then have the further report come back with our concerns about the length of time, the length, the delay that is going to be for a, for a shelter. I'm not talking, we're not talking about something that's up to, that you're going to use for the future, but just something that can give a person some shelter when they're up there. Yes, Steve? Whenever Kevin is done, but I, just through you, Madam Mayor, my understanding of the shelter in Cavendish was just a shelter, no heat, no water, no nothing. No. And then it went to a minor variance and 150 plus thousand dollars and so on and so forth. So us as management got together with a different look and say, how we, can we do it? Because the fire home needs to be done at this date. This needs to be done at that date. If we change some timelines, can we still accomplish the same thing? And then I believe in my view for Galway was that we were just going to go ahead and do a roads garage at this date and then a fire hall at this date. Therefore, we didn't want to tear down a good fire hall to do the both. But if we could manipulate those timelines, use the same type of building design, same septic, same well, same so on and so forth, that's the approach that we took this time. So, And that makes absolute perfect <clears throat> sense, except the one that has an any shelter ends up being put in the back end of it. <laughs> you Madam Mayor, if it's not my department to speak for but I would have some statistics on the fire side on how many times my individuals would have to do something like that to know if it warranted that type of situation per se so I mean like I don't know how many times in the last however many years you would need chains on that's not my department but I'm sure that uh, without putting Evan on the spot he can find something like that out for you Donna, what would happen if, if um, with your department uh, head, you come up with exactly what Steve was talking about there initially, which was what I think we thought. It was going to be a basic shelter that the truck could go in, it would be dry, doesn't need heat, doesn't need any of that stuff, just a, a place that he can get into a dry truck, put his chains on, do whatever he needs to do, and not have to go to Buckhorn to pick it up or whatever. Yes. Madam Mayor, through you, um, if there's no heat and it's still 30 below, that temperature in that building isn't going to do much than the ambient temperature outside. Therefore, it's not going to thaw out. And you might as well be outside where there's light anyways, if that was the case, person. Kind of thought. Except if you're being covered with freezing rain. I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just seemed to me that it was, that it's not very... Like we wouldn't ask, we wouldn't ask anybody else in this room to work in a situation that didn't have shelter. Yes, Peter. I'm just a comment. There's no such thing as building a simple shelter when you're dealing with the municipality. Well, I know they're not putting up a tent. No, no, I, I'm just saying the, the costs are always substantial when the municipality does anything. Yes, Jesse. Chelsea. Chelsea, I did it again. So for you, and just to add to what Councilor Brandon just spoke to, that was definitely a consideration that um, we discussed, Steve, Evan, and myself, 
when making the decision to not proceed or bring it to the table to not proceed with the temporary structure because it would be a substantial cost and there wouldn't necessarily be a use for it in the future. So once we did go ahead with a joint facility, there would be no use for, for that shelter because it is just used, like Evan said, for a tandem or a loader to be kept there um, when work is uh, being undertaken in that area. So that was something that we weighed on is, does the cost of say $150,000 warrant the need for the amount of times that the chains are put on or that staff would actually have to do work to their tandem in that area and not be able to complete it at the Buckhorn Depot. Yes. I have another question for you, Mayor Donna. Uh, when we're talking about borrowing money at the municipal level, uh, is there a, a mechanism that we get into a locked-in interest rate for a number of years? So through you, uh, through Infrastructure Ontario, uh, I learned after attending a meeting with them, it is locked in and you can't pay it early. So you would have a locked-in amount. Through CIBC, um, they would have the availability to pay it off sooner if we wanted. So we have to look at both of those options. Okay. But yes, they only amortize over a certain length of time. So it's early discussions there, but we would have the rate for at least 10 okay. years. So, so it's very similar to getting a mortgage. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay, Terry, I'd like your comment since. Um, what would you like me to comment? <laughs> I, I, I think it's, it concerns me that we are going to have, as our winters seem to be changing slightly, we are putting chains on trucks quite a bit more often. And I think every other operator puts chains on in a nice warm building. So it's difficult for me to not support putting something up there for that operator to put chains on. I mean, something if we're going to be replacing the whole sand dome and that which i don't think that would be in the near future i think the sand dome has been built recently it probably has another 30 35 years of life so an addition on the side of that to house somewhere to put chains on to be out of the weather because the wind's blowing it i mean you're not out there in the middle of the summer putting chains on obviously so it, it's kind of important to me to have something there for that driver but when you've seen the person laying under the truck in the slushy wet snow trying to put a chain on it looks a little bit counterproductive because i don't understand through you can that individual not put chains on in buckhorn you can you oh. could you can put chains on in buckhorn it's going to cause increased damage to your chains and then the roads as well because it's traveling so far so yeah. I, I think the Keep. county would have a different opinion they might okay sorry thank you through you, Mayor, though, to and just to expand on your thought, is that they, theoretically they could utilize Galway as an area to put on change. In addition, because with the lean to you're not actually providing heat, what we could do is just reduce the amount of sand that we're storing within the shed, and he can utilize because that is a concrete floor within there, and he could utilize that as the same thing. That's fine. If, that, if that's if that's really the, the direction of council to provide a, a place we can reduce the amount of sand, which wouldn't would not increase, impact our level of service for what it takes for us to run out an extra load or whatever he needs up there. But for us to create a space within that sand dome, we could do that so we could have an area within that sand dome that could be utilized as a area to put on the chains, which which would accomplish the same thing as what a lean to. That works, mm -hmm. that works. And the sand in that dome with the salt gives off a certain amount of heat. So that uh, that area won't be as, won't be as good. Be no, that, Everybody feel good about that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. See how many heads you can put together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe how many heads you need to put <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So through you, we would be looking for, for the recommendation contained in the report, which would be to receive the report for information and direct the CAO treasurer to report back to council on boring options and necessary approvals to fund the approved facility replacements and that council directs staff to proceed further reporting on the updated suggested facility replacement. Perfect. Now, do you need a motion to that effect? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, Councillor Lamsay. I'll second that motion. Councillor Armstrong. All in favor? Motion is carried.
All right, we've accomplished one thing today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you. So, oh, sorry. No, I, I was just gonna was we have like a five minute break. Sure.
Okay, Donna. So thank you and through you. The next budget is the general government budget, which uh, Jesse and I will be doing for you. Um, lots of excitement in general government this year with the election. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have next on the agenda, oh. Dylan. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure it 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 thank you very much, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, annually, I put out a request to all the um, hall boards, kind of asking them if there's uh, what's on their wish list that they'd like uh, Council to consider funding in the, the upcoming budget year. So I've uh, I received re requests from Galway and from Lakehurst. I have not heard from Cavendish, um, but we will uh, try to see if there's anything um that's on their their wish list that they'd like to get included for the next time we're sitting at this table um galway's only request really was for a kitchen renovation um it's pretty sure that kitchen is uh circa 1982 when they they built the building um so it's pretty pretty dated um they've you know they, they want to improve the efficiency there um and just the just a bit of updating um so i would like to get you know, and I think it's good and I think it's an opportune time while COVID and everything is relatively quiet on their cooking front. Um, I talked with uh, the chair of the committee up there just last week and he kind of indicated that until the health unit is supportive of a buffet style dining that they don't anticipate to be having a lot of um, larger events. Um, so, you know, during COVID, it is kind of a little bit more of an opportune time to make those those upgrades. If council had the appetite, we would um, probably want to work with uh, maybe a kitchen design specialist, specialist, someone who uh, specializes in that that area of expertise, and with the hall board and make sure that their uh, their wants and needs are are captured in in a new kitchen. If if council has the appetite for that, um, Lakehurst has requested parking lot lighting. Um, which we are going to try to see because I, I strongly agree with this one the parking the lighting in that parking lot is not good. Um, if there I do have some room in under 2021 I'm trying to get some pricing on I'm doing some lighting under under this year. Um, Lakers has also requested um, the municipality pay for their waste disposal so currently um, I believe all of the the halls get a an access pass um, and they were told that they, that it needs to be paid for their you know bag by bag um so laker selected to go with a um you know a waste management type company that just comes and picks up the bin um so they are requesting to pay for that alternatively council i i did speak with uh chelsea and i, I believe her and evan talked about it could be a possibility to get the, the halls a punch card um that that's an, another alternative um because council kind of gives them options and we don't really collect any revenue um, from their activities that generate the waste um, it's it's my opinion that 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 this particular one i wouldn't recommend um, wouldn't recommend supporting this one um, they were requested to pay for the internet um, to the the tune of about fifteen hundred dollars a year. Um, in the past, we did pay for internet at Galway. Cavendish receives free internet because of the Nexacom tower. Both Galway and Cavendish have a building automation system that run off of the internet there. Um, and so it is. It's my belief that, and I would like to install a similar system at Lakehurst um, that we uh, pay for the internet. At these that way we ensure it's always going. You know, we're using it for our convenience essentially with the building automation system so we don't have to go to site to change the temperature or something for them. Um, we can do it all, I can do it remotely from my office. So um, I would, you know, it is my recommendation that we we take on that 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 payment there for that um, as well. We could look at, you know, maintaining the security of it through our IT firm um, and as well, you know, maybe we could set up some community hotspots kind of thing, which they, they do do a little bit of so far. It's just, it's a little hit and miss in, in spots. And lastly, they have a request for a paved parking lot. Um, so this is, it is a mostly a gravel parking lot at Lakehurst currently. Um, and in the, in the springtime, it's a fair chore for, for the guys to be cleaning up the gravel and sand that just 
but due to the nature of the activity, the snow plows rip a lot of it up and it gets piled in the corner kind of thing. Um, and it, you know, it tends to tends to pond pretty bad and wash out along the, the hill edges there. Um, so we would also concur with paving the parking lot there at Lakehurst. So with whatever council has appetite for, um, we've kind of uh, included a total of the recommended items, which are the items highlighted in blue. Um, and then the proposed to approve all of these, the proposed increase to the 2022 budget would be approximately $100,000. Um, so yeah, you know, open for council's discussion on what items they consider supporting. Um, yeah. Council, yes. Uh, just a question on the Galway hundred thousand dollars to reservation system. Yeah. Is that the realistic price? That's just uh, an estimate, budgetary estimate. Yeah. We I haven't mean, received any You're probably votes. looking at close to twenty thousand dollars for commercial stove. Yeah. We, but you know. So there is a hood and stove. I would hope that we wouldn't have to change the location of a lot of the, the fixtures. Yeah, but um, I mean, you'd be replacing fixtures, would you not? Uh, if if it if warranted, yeah. yeah. The, the stove seems to be in pretty good shape up okay. there. I think it's mostly the cabinets and countertops okay. they're looking at um, and some additional shelving in the fridge yeah. sort of thing. I know they're looking for that as well. Because I know even in a residential kitchen, you can mm -hmm. easily spend $100,000. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's a pretty rough estimate. Yeah. Um, but if there if there's the appetite for that, we would uh, need some harder numbers. Yes. Thank you, Chief Madam. Uh, Chief Carson still. One is um, how much of this is already in the budget? We're looking at about one hundred and fifty six thousand dollars here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, just our, our standard AMP. Um, um, Funding. So if council wanted to go for these, then um, it, it'd be basically the kitchen that we're, we would need to add on because we could accommodate the rest under, our, I believe it's about $65,000 per year that we put in. Yes, okay, that's great. And, and John, I did call the initial slide, so that's great. The other thing, I don't know whether it's you or, or Evan, but it will be coming forward. I think I saw an email to you at um, the parking lot at Cavendish outside the library is pretty rough and there was a request to look at that and, and uh, <laughs> yeah we, we had a conversation with a couple minutes ago <laughs> so i don't know if that'll be in, an, in another additional you said you haven't looked at cavendish mm -hmm. but i know it's come up through the library so okay will that be something else that we'll need to be considered for next year yeah um if that's a request coming forward, then I think that's something that we should be considering whose budget that falls under is a, I, the worst of it's in front of the library, I think. I did, I haven't looked at it. Yeah. I can take a look at it and then um, sort of report back and see what I think we can do. Um, depending on what the work is, if it's a smaller area, I could even have the work done just internally through operations sort of thing. It just depends how much. I'm not exactly sure what the extent of the work they're looking for. Um, so I'll have to go up there and take a, take a more closer look. That's, I haven't been looking at the cabinet this Saturday or Tuesday night. Yeah, no, and that's fair. I know it just came up like Saturday or something. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I wouldn't expect you to have an answer, but I did just want to throw that in. Sure. Now, Lakehurst would like to have the uh, mailboxes moved to the side of the parking lot. The side of the parking lot? Yeah, you know where they are. They're stuck right out there in the middle. They're Night in a great, great spot. I'm sure yeah. having guys like plowing around. <laughs> well, it's hard uh, to get out of there at night and not run into one. We'll have to, yeah. Well, that's a, again with the lighting too, is is really improving the lighting there. Um, yeah, I, I'll have to touch base with Canada Post because I don't know who is responsible for moving those suckers. I don't particularly want to be responsible for wrecking one. Yeah. Pardon? Typically, any movement of those, it's community mailboxes, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, any movement of those is all through the camera, of course. Yeah, they stuck them right and in front of They are just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they stuck them right in front of the, almost in front of where you walk in. <laughs> okay, I've done my job. That's what they asked me to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess looking for, we're looking for some direction on uh, what sort of, 
items council would uh, would like to approve um, or defer. Yeah, I'd like to approve all of the ones on the list. The, the Galway Hall was on our list for last year, mm -hmm. and we deferred it <laughs> because we were waiting for the outside of the building to get completed and thought we didn't want to tackle both of those jobs at once. So I think it's reasonable to uh, tackle that as a big project over the this year. So I certainly would support all of the requests that are there. Do we have a second? Yes. No, no, I, I, I'll second, but I'd like to make a comment. I, I, I'd like to get a, a firmer price than a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, is it going to be a hundred and twenty? Is it going to be two hundred? We have no idea. They just that it's just the number that's growing out there. We don't even know what needs to be replaced in that kitchen and uh, what needs to be relocated. So, how about putting the motion forward not to exceed without coming back to council? Would you like to put that in as sure. a yeah? It's, a it's definitely got to come back again in, in future meetings, anyway. So. Yeah. Would yeah. that would that uh, yeah, do you sure. want to put the? That would be fine. We'll work on getting some firm numbers there. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Just, just yes, Terry. What was the solution for the waste disposal? For the card? Are we recommending all of these items, or are we just recommending the kitchen? I think the card was just whether or not we would give them a uh, punch card, wasn't it? In my motion, I was just suggesting we put in the twelve hundred dollars, and they can work out what the appropriate solution is within the budget. The, the through you, Mayor, the the staff weren't recommending the waste disposal again because we don't collect the revenue there that the waste is generated through. That was that was my only thinking, but council certainly has the if there was confusion there on the list. Well, I'm sure confused. <laughs> no, I, I think I, because it was white and not blue on the thing, I, yeah. I think it was taken out of the suggestion. So that is not, that 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 $1,200 is not included in the total recommended items of 157,700. That is not included in there. If council wants to include that, that would up it to 158,900, which is a small, one percent in the large scheme of things, but do we want to start again? <laughs> Councillor Armstrong, would you like to rephrase your motion? Uh, now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I gave it to you to do. <laughs> so the recommendation of twelve hundred dollars is to do what? Sorry, through you, Mayor. I'll, I'll start again a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll we'll, re, we'll reset here. So in the chart, um, all of the, the the rows that are highlighted in blue are items that staff recommend proceeding with. The one item in white, staff are not recommending proceeding um, because we don't collect the revenue at that site that is generated by the waste. So they generate the waste, they collect revenue on that generation. In my opinion, I don't think we should reimburse them for that. They should factor that into their operational costs. Dylan, how would they get money from that? How do they get money from what, sorry? You said they generate income. So they have they they host an event, let's say they host they host a dinner, they collect five thousand dollars at that dinner. They gen the waste they generated at that dinner, that we don't we don't collect any of the revenue they generated from that dinner. So why are why well I guess because we own them and any money that they collect is to offset what it costs us to run it. So I'm not sure that they're generating money from that. I think it's just a cost of their of their doing business. Through you, Mayor, we don't, the hall boards keep all of the revenue that they generate. No, but the revenue they generate goes to offset uh, the expenses. Like they don't pay for themselves. We right. top up whatever they're short. So if they didn't do what they do, we would end up paying a lot more money to them. To like they're not, they're not, um, they're not income producing. They're not producing it for themselves. They're producing it for the, for the community center to keep the community center. The, they maintain their own bank account to, yeah, to continue their operations. We simply pay for the building maintenance and the utilities. But we would pay more if they weren't generating money. 
the money that they generate goes to offset the cost of, of, uh, of the buildings. No. No. So through you, no. Yeah, the costs to run the building are paid for through Dylan's budget. Any money raised would be for their, you know, potentially if they needed a new stove or there's a few things that they would raise mm -hmm. money for, for programming or that type of thing. But I would also suggest that there are annual grants every year that they could apply for and Lakehurst has not applied for grants for several years. So they could put a request in for under the grant program and request funding for, for garbage. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me, but. I just have a question through the mayor for Dylan. Um, if we were to approve this $1,200 for waste, would we have to approve a similar amount for our other community centers? I wouldn't say that you have to, but it's a kind of precedent setting. That's what I'm wondering. All of a sudden, $1,200 becomes $3,600 or more. That's a consideration we, okay. for council. Yes. Thank you, Andrew. I'm going to muddy the waters a little bit more. Oh, come on. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just reference our waste bylaw. So, in our waste bylaw, bylaw it says um, residential properties receive a waste card. So, should council decide to proceed with giving a waste card to the um, the halls, then there would have to be an exception granted to the waste bylaw to, I guess, cross T's and dot I's and ensure that it's being adhered to. Evan, you want to say something? I know you do. I don't want to set on anybody's toes. Oh, come on. Um, but just from my point of view, is when you look at community hall and what they're providing to the community, you look at overall the public response budget, which is in excess of millions of dollars. What is it for the public response? I don't understand we're doing going against their bylaw. It's sort of one of those things. But I wouldn't have an issue with providing them the rates from my point of view, they're providing service to the community anyways and we are if they were lining their pockets or something i would feel differently but it's sort of the community and i'm not sure how that 1200 dollars would have come out of their budgets and they would transfer it to us i'm not sure where that how that 1200 would work on the back end of things but when i think about it on the overall the scale of what our budget is what we're really providing them what they're providing in terms of the community like you said if we, if we don't have those halls like that's the one thing I loved about Trent Lakes is that community feeling. Those halls are really tough to drive on, so I don't have an issue when it's a small amount like that with the support of what I also understand with Chelsea coming from and we're done from so I don't want to step on any words, but it's just sort of my point. Sorry to tell us the words. It would be an easy fix for you, um, Mayor Clarkson, to add that a uh, municipally owned building is an exception to the bylaw. I was just saying that if should council decide to go ahead with that, that we should probably just clean up the bylaw and have a clause in there to, to speak to that. Um, Councilor Lawrence. I think we might be confusing a little bit of things here. I, I do believe Lakers Hall has a bin that gets dumped once a week, once a month. And I think that's what that cost is. Yes. All our other community halls, transport their their stuff to the transport stations. I, I think we will be paying for a bin to be dumped. So all the halls will want a bin to be dumped. But that, their request is to pay the, for their bin dumping. Yes. So I, I would be in favor of giving them a card or whatever, let them take it to the transfer site, but yeah. I don't think it's appropriate for us to pay for a bin. And that's where I think the yes. confusion is. Let me try the motion again, which is to uh, support the blue <laughs> recommended uh, improvements for our uh, uh, community halls as proposed and brought forward by the staff. So you're not going to say anything about the garbage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Resolve it without, yeah. resolve it another way. It's not the budget. I take my motion. Okay, any other comments? All in favor? I, I'd just like to make one comment. I, I think that we should uh, have staff investigate uh, uh, punch cards for our community centers to, to, to use for their uh, their functions. 
Then why don't you just make it a motion and I'll second I'll make it a motion. Okay, and I'll second that, that they're, that they're all provided with a punch card. Yep. Okay. All in favor? I think the motion was to investigate first. Yeah, investigate, right? I, I investigate first. Yeah. Uh, come back with the report. So you don't, okay. I'm so making a motion that, uh, that staff investigate punch cards for the, our community. Okay, so, so I said, do you want to make I a motion to do it? Report. All right. Okay, then I'll second that. All in favor? That is carried. Hopefully you guys are all out of sorts now that I've done it. I tell you, in my view, if we want to make money to balance this thing off, the people who come in in the summertime should be paying a whole lot more than whatever it is they're paying a bag. That's a license to steal. And if they don't like to pay it, then they should take it home. You just fell off your chair, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I had a little stumble myself. So, are we ready to move on to general government then? Is that yeah. for real this time? <laughs> so, before you, the general government overview is the first slide there. So, just a couple of things. In 2021, the EDO position did do a lot of work. Uh, there, it is still evolving. We recognize that. The website was completed, which is really good. There will be some future work to ensure AODA compliance. And there was some hiring undertaken, which is in this room largely. Um, and there was a new purchasing policy and there is a wage review underway that we partnered with the county and other lower tiers on. There was also a new presentation created for the ratepayer meeting, which was an interactive presentation. And there was a new three-year uh, QP agreement signed in 2021. There was also some challenges. The temporary records coordinator position was delayed due to some staffing issues in the finance department, but we're now able to move on on that one. And the strategic plan that was in the budget for council was uh, not awarded after the RFP process. So if there's not any questions there, and on work plans, all the work plans in the budgets are there for you. We're here to answer any questions you may have on those. We won't go through them all unless council wants us to, but um, we'll move to the summary page for general government. So this budget is up, the budget is up 2.94% and the levy is up 1.89%. And the particulars of that are there for you. And it is an election year, although there are some reserve monies being used for for that, we've been putting money aside, but there still needs to be some raised as well. So if you wanna to go to the, to the next document there, please, Anne. So just to talk about some of the particulars contained in that budget. So you'll see that the supplemental uh, revenue is, I have lowered that. I may be able to up that slightly. I did get in, I receive another sub run that may allow us to up that a little bit. So I will look at that. The gas tax funding is now actually the Canada Community Building Fund. They've changed the name of it, but you will see, and we did have a little conversation on that earlier, that we did receive some additional funds in 2021 that were not expected, but we will put any unspent monies into the reserve for future work, and that could be the new fire stations now with the new provisions allowed. So. The safe restart money, we have continued to receive some money from the province. I will be bringing a report to council shortly with that as well. So we're actually for the safe restart with the um, couple of streams that they have given us. They've now for $630,680 they've given us for COVID costs. And I have a very good list of what we've spent that on to date and plan to use it probably in all of 2021. Uh, largely to do in the building and planning department with extra wage requirements there and, and the consultant work there. But I will give you reporting on that. And there are additional, we, we've used it for the cloud permit, for the budgets, that the fit testing machine, several things. So I will give you a report on that. But we plan to try to use those all in 2021. We believe that will be quite easy to. The bank account interest I have lowered 
I did have a further discussion with our, lend, our CIBC about the interest rate and found out that we had locked into a new interest rate just before the pandemic hit, which is prime less 1.75, which I'm being told is unheard of at the moment. So we're actually, the money we're receiving for interest every month, CIBC are losing funds on giving us that interest. So I'm not looking to change anything there at this time <laughs> based on that. Um, and um, we do need some liquidity right now with all the facility work that will be happening. So we're still, we're still doing well on the interest rate comparatively, I'm hearing. So from reserves, we're looking at taking some money out and you'll see in the budget um, for the, we're, we're looking to use service delivery money to update the asset management plan as you know, that was done in-house from the beginning, and we think it's time to bring a consultant in to look at that. And then, Jesse, do you want to speak to the other use of service delivery money for accessibility, please? Yeah, the other accessibility project we are hoping to do um, is sort of document remediation, as well as training on accessible documents and creation of accessible templates. So we're hoping to issue um, an RFQ and get a consultant in to help us um, with that, we did some work on it with the new website and our, um, that we have to comply with that. Any um, content on the website um, has to be accessible, um, but we're not fully there yet. And moving forward, we want some uh, documents and guidance to be able to continue to provide accessible documents to the public. Quick question um, through Madam Mayor. Uh, the closed captioning piece, couldn't that be done with search delivery funds? Um, through you, Mark Clarkson. Um, yes. Potentially. It, um, I'm asking for that uh, as an annual budget item that would be added, not a one time. Um, with the recording of council meetings, I don't plan on stopping that anytime soon. So that would be an annual $15,000 that I'd be asking to look for in the budget every year. So this year, potentially. Yeah. Strategically, you might want to think about it because again, we're in a year where impact is an increase in the, the valuation. So we've got to cover off that bump that we would have gotten from them. So it might be worth it, at least for this year. I understand in future years, we'll have to go into operating. Yeah. Okay, can we, that yeah. uh, is a item. Yeah. Can we iron that out? Oh, sure. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause sorry, cause sorry, you know, sure. Again, another one yep. to consider, especially as we see more requests come in and there's pressure on the actual tax rate, um, then it might be worth at that point considering some different reserve funds to offset that. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, looking to take the money out of reserves for that asset management update. We can use some development charges. That's that 1851. And then the 58,149 is the balance for that work as well with the accessibility work that Jesse just spoke about. The election reserve, we have 46,622.79 collected in that. So we're looking to pull that out. And that $30,000 from the general government reserve is for an update that's required to the CIP. And you'll see that budget has increased substantially and we're offsetting that increase with the reserve money. So carrying on to the expense side, I'm going to let Jesse speak to the council and accountability officer. Please, Jeff. Sure, um, through you, Mayor Clarkson. There's not much of a change um, from 2021 to 2022. I think there was a difference of around $4,000 and that was uh, due to council not proceeding with that strategic plan from this year. Um, we kept pretty much everything the same, but did increase um, education courses for next year as it will be an election year. So we'll be looking for some orientation for new council and accountability officer. We kept the same as well. Yeah. So as far as its administration goes, um, we have lowered the wages in there. You'll see there was a staff member's wages that was moved out of this budget and into the appropriate department. Uh, we do have a request for an additional staff. We'll get to that shortly here. There has been an increase uh, in the insurance. I Early conversation with our insurer is about 10% to build in. 
but we are looking to do some tendering shortly to try to get some better pricing and has kindly been working on that for us. So future, you know, we're not sure how many will, would bid on an insurance tender for us, but we're looking to try to make sure we get the best pricing possible. There has been a substantial increase in our computer software hardware. It's there's a lot of things that now require an annual fee and I will be coming to council with some IT requests shortly. So there's some annual fees involved in that as well. So yes, there are substantial fees, even our new website annually associated with software licensing. Um, and you'll see in all of the budgets we have removed, we had very good discussions at the department head level about taking out the grass and snow internal budgets. It was kind of just a wash thing. We didn't think it was with the extra work required to track those numbers worth doing that. So you'll see all of the budgets have those removed from them. We will continue for 2021 to finalize those amounts for you, but carrying forward of council support that we wouldn't be looking to continue. Election, Jesse, do you have anything to add on that? Um, no, increased election um, costs a little bit um, due to COVID. I'm not sure what exactly to expect, um, what that'll look like, um, as well as the addition of paper ballots um, was a, a, another additional cost associated with that. And the Buckhorn Regional Health Center, those costs are there for you. I have decreased their budget as well by that grass and snow internal transfer. The other, so the EDAC, we know that we don't have our group. We've discussed that our committees are coming forward uh, shortly with their rec recommendations. That'll be coming to the January meeting to council. And I have added the CIP, the $30,000 we discussed, which is why that budget is up to 65,000. The trail town, I'm not sure what has been spent at that. That may change. I'm, I'm, I'm unclear there what has been spent or if there's going to be some spending on that this year. The 63,000 in the annual service review is the 30 for the accessibility and the asset management plan. And it's also the actuarial review that we're required to do every five years for benefits for people that retire. So that I've included in there and that's mandatory. And then the Kid Mount Medical Center gone down slightly because of that same grass and, and snow entry. So is there any question on the general government? Yes. Thank you, Member. Um, yeah, if, if we could get, uh, and I think we're headed there, just a listing of what's in here for economic development committee in total, because I think we saw 66,000 in Dylan's budget and the trail town, which will also be part of the DAX um, budget of 22,000. If we could just get a, a listing of what's included in that, I think it'd be very helpful. And as we talked about earlier, from a process standpoint, you know, advise the committee that that's what's in the budget and how to basically use it uh, and bring that forward as a proposal to council and any additional monies that they think would be possible. So through you, so you'll see for the committee work. So that is that first EDAC line at $8,000. Right. That's for the work of the committee and we haven't received the request. So that may be high. We may be able to change that. I don't know. Right. You'll see that the, the economic development, the 66,000 is now not there. So it's in the 2021 budget. I've moved that over to Dylan's budget. So that's not there anymore in this. Mm -hmm. But the yes, the trail town, I'm not sure if I could provide you a list of what is in there? I know that there was a report recently, I believe that Lynn brought, requesting that money be used for a new sign for Buckhorn. So I'm just not, I don't know if I can provide that. I know there were discussions on what it potentially was going to be used for as far as uh, once again, bike racks, that type of thing, but I'm not sure what that was given to the EDAC group to look after. Yeah, okay. That, that's a fine answer, Donna. I think that there's just confusion around all of that. We need some clarity um, going forward so we know what money is we're talking about and what it's going to be spent on. It's just a little. It's totally confusing. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So, any more questions on that? Any? Okay. So, we'll move. We do have a couple of requests that would be on top of the budget. So, the first one 
is uh, we did have discussions, Steve and I talked, I guess when that fire hall was built, they talked about doing some kind of electronic sign, but that wasn't done at that time. But we did, part of the budget feedback from last year was to put a sign there. So I thought it was a really good use of the service delivery money as well to put an electronic sign at, at the driveway. I estimated 20,000, I'm not sure if that. Okay, so we're still finding that out. But I think, that's, I think be... that's low. Oh, okay. I think it's low. I... We should get a price on it too, because we need one in Buckhorn. <laughs> in Buckhorn where, sorry? Uh, just coming in to uh, to talk about all the different stuff that's going on in the village and up here and across the township. Pretty much everybody that comes up through that area comes um, across the bridge, and right there is where there should be is where there should be a sign. It's like a lot of places, you know, they advert they put the signs up, and then uh, individual businesses pay so much to be adver to uh, advertise on them. Like the one in um, in uh, Bridge North is totally paid by advertisers. So through you, that I, wasn't something I was considering considering advertisement. It was more just to pass along as a communication tool for the public, just because of the location of it here. So we haven't discussed the one in Buckhorn before, so I'm not sure. But I will get some better pricing on that. But I just don't know if council are supportive of having a sign at the driveway here that would help the fire department, for instance, during burn bans, that type of thing. And easier to change than going out and physically changing a sign if you had it electronic. They're a good idea. Okay, do you need motions for any of these things now or yeah, so just to receive the report maybe at this point? If council don't wish to proceed on that, this year that's fine but we would be looking for a motion to proceed and look to to put a sign and get some better costing on that yes yeah, so that that's a mobile sign right donna no it's, no not it's not my understanding it isn't okay so if you want to change the location you could not do that no i don't believe so okay. no. yes it would say take place of the sign we have right there with just their logo on it and it would Give municipality taxes are due, change your batteries and your smoke alarms, up and coming event, election, yep. that type of stuff. And then you have a remote control. So in, in here, you can change the sign. Yeah. That's it. Yes, Peter. I'll make a motion to support the signage in this year's budget. I think it's important. It's a communication tool. Mm -hmm. Best one we've got, yes. I'll actually second that because we, as a council, have said that's what we want to do is better communicate with rate payers and kind of support them. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. And the next one is a request for a new position. And Jesse, if you could speak to that, please. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, the budget information paper was included on the agenda, but in summary, um, having the records coordinator position, while we did get started on some projects with that position, um, unfortunately due to staffing um, issues in the finance department, uh, we lost a lot of momentum um, and it has definitely highlighted the need um, for more assistance to both myself and the CAO. Um, so in order to provide more support, a job description was drafted and attached to the budget information paper that speaks to a number of duties um highlighting records management election as well as assistance to the cao in researching policies and procedures uh streamlining administrative procedures agreement tracking um and continuing to assist with general service and information um so the costing has been included and the recommendation is to support the inclusion of the wages for a legislative coordinator executive assistant to the cao position um, in the 2022 budget Motion? Yes. I would make a motion to support that. I think we all know we're understaffed and we look to staff to make recommendations to council as to what it is they need. Um, and our job is to support you to get the job done. So I would make that motion. Seconder? I'll second that motion. Comments? All in favor? Carried. Next. Thank you. Jesse, that would close captioning, please. 
Thank you, through you, Mayor Cluxton. Um, this is a budget request for um, an increase in the operating budget. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it would be um, an annual uh, budget implication for closed captioning. Um, this is again to provide more accessibility to the content that we're putting out um, on the internet. Um, so the closed captioning um, just is like a written script script of, of what's happening during the council meeting. Uh, currently we have staff performing um, this, which is very time consuming and tedious. And we definitely think that staff time could be better spent doing um, other projects. So I did get a quote from a company that provides uh, captioning services of $3.30 per minute. Um, and I averaged that on the average time and number of council meetings we have per year um, for the 15,000. I'm going to make a comment. Go ahead, Carol. I was just going to make a motion to support that. Yeah, the, um, it should, it should um, roll over into um, uh, meetings as well. Like my granddaughter belongs to the Parks and Rec and it's Zoomed. And she can get absolutely nothing from a Zoom. So it's either come to in-person meetings where she can lip read or they do something to close caption because she might as well not be attending a meeting because she's no idea what's going on. Sorry, through you, just to clarify, this would not be for um, while a meeting is happening. It would be for the recording of the meeting that is then put on the internet on YouTube afterwards. So it's not during a meeting that there would be captions. It would be the recording of the meeting. There would be captions. Hmm. And we don't currently record committee meetings. So a person is going to have to go back and watch a meeting in order to get the closed caption. Um, yes, if that's where we would provide the closed captioning and that's to do with the AODA. So any website content, there's certain standards that we have to meet if we're putting content on the website or on the internet and one of those measures is that we have to provide captioning for recordings of meetings. Hmm. Is that what you thought it was? So you still want to make that motion? I do. Yes, Peter. I'll second that motion just with a comment. It's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. It, it would be ideal if it was live when we have a count. There are people that uh, that review our council meeting on the Friday when it says on uh, YouTube. Terry, any comment or? No, I, I think our clerk has a comment. Or yes, I there I could look into costing for that. That would be an additional cost above the fifteen thousand. Um, I don't know what it is per minute, but it would be someone um, like an outside vendor listening to into our council meetings and and captioning it while it's happening live, um, it's not as good a quality as what they would provide for the recordings because they're doing it as it's happening. Um, but it is something that if council would like to take on that initiative, I'd be happy to report back on costing for that as well. Well, let's before we carve it in stone, we look at it both ways. That, that is not currently a requirement with the AODA is not to have live time captioning, but the uh, content that's posted on the internet, which would be the recording of the council meeting, there is a requirement for captioning. Yes, Peter. I, I, I think we should vote on this particular motion and have the clerk uh, look into uh, how we can improve upon uh, closed captioning at a future meeting. Okay. But I think it's important to proceed with this now. But you wouldn't want to proceed with this and then turn around and do it differently, would you? I think we'd want to do both. We'd want to do it live and we would want, want it uh, for our recorded session as well. Well, you made the motion? I did. I, I think there's separate initiatives and yep. separate. Yeah. People that would be yep. doing each their special skill yep. set. So I don't think one will put together. So you would do both? You would do both? No, no. The motion is just for what's on the table that staff yep. have already investigated. Yep. Okay. So, so is there a second or just to that motion then? Just for that motion. Okay. All in favor? 
Okay. And then Peter, were you looking to bring forward another motion about? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, uh, I'll make a motion to direct staff to, to look at the uh, uh, live closed Can captioning for our council meetings. Okay, uh, seconder to that motion. Uh, Councillor Lambson, all in favor? Motion is carried. Yes. I'm sorry. And, sorry. sorry, before we move on, I just wanted to clarify with Councillor Armstrong. I have that this would be a new line item um, for the closed captioning services that you had mentioned earlier about using service delivery money for that. Did you want to? I, I didn't want to lock that in. I really wanted to leave that to the discretion okay. of staff as we're doing the budget, but I did want to flag it as an opportunity to be able to reduce the tax burden if they get, if there's a need to do so. Okay. Thank you. And then and the last I budget. With, I think with our, with our committees, if we can't do something like this, we should have somebody there doing sign language. Because there's no point in being a committee member if you can't see what's going on, if you can't tell what's going on. And sign language would pick up on a Zoom. Yes. Uh, uh, just a comment though. Uh, most of the time, Jasmine has a problem getting on the, on the line, mm -hmm. but she's doing it over the telephone. So. I don't know how sign would help her. Because she can't do anything on if the telephone, she can hear it better. The Zoom for her when she can't see what's going on with the people. Okay. I, I, I just thought there might be a, a difficulty with the connection with the Zoom. We've got that too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it is a problem. <laughs> uh, and the last budget information paper is actually Councillor Armstrong. So you'd like me to talk? Yes, please. <laughs> Um, this may come from the, uh, the EDAC committee as well, but it's something I was going to introduce independently. And that is to uh, engage a consultant to prepare an economic development, uh, tourism and recovery strategic plan for us. And the rationale is kind of twofold. One is I believe that we need to provide uh, that committee in the next term of council with a roadmap for um, what activities would best and have the greatest impact on economic development in our community. Um, I would say the biggest accomplishments of that committee to date in this term have been moving along the recommendations of the Green Space Streetscape Plan, which was done in the previous council term, as well as uh, advancing some of the CIP opportunities and projects. And so the fact that they had a plan to work with and then were able to implement that and bring it forward to council worked very well. Um, but I, again, I think it would be helpful to provide uh, a plan, not only for that committee, but also for council and it can fold into our overall strategic, our, their <laughs> strategic plan in the next term. Um, so I, I ballparked about 25000 to $30,000 for that kind of a study. Uh, most other municipalities have already done one of these, and I think it's timely that we did that for our municipality. Uh, we can certainly build on what PKD has done, because they have done quite a lot um, in terms of collecting data and putting together strategies, but it's a broad strategy, and as we all know, um, there are some uniquenesses in Shrine Lakes, uh, which suggests that the things we can do uh, to be most impactful may be somewhat different than what would be uh, countywide. So I think it is important for us to preserve that. That's my speech. Anybody with a comment? I have a comment. I think Gabby, and you can tell me what her position is because I can't tell you. But she has turned out to be a tremendous resource for us. This is someone at uh, that yeah. that sits with us. So for a while she came to every meeting, and then they decided that she needed to deal with uh, two different municipalities. So we only get her half time. But she comes um, she comes free of charge. Obviously she's paid through through somebody. But over time she's got a pretty good handle on who we are. And I'm concerned that we spend a lot of money on somebody who does not understand not only what's what's positive about this community, but what our limitations are. 
And we've had those people before that have come in and given us grandiose ideas that just make no sense to us at all without service land and, and a lot of the other things that we have. So I think before we would spend that kind of money, I would think we should bring Gabby into a council meeting, have her explain what it is that she can offer, how she works with other people, and see if we can utilize her, who's taken the time to get to know us, before we go out looking for somebody that uh, does not understand Trent Lakes. Comments? This is what's my line. <laughs> Yes. I'd like to second Councillor Armstrong's motion. Uh, any other, any further comment? Just a further comment. I think in, in drafting the RFP and then the vetting process for those that, that bid on it, um, we can identify people that have the appropriate background and certainly give them information that would make uh, uh, the study that they do relevant to us. And while Gabby is a terrific resource and support for us, um, to actually do a strategic plan is not something that she's being paid to do and would be more than we could expect from her in her role as head of the song. Yes. And this is to engage a consultant to prepare a plan, like to, to give us information that we can try to follow. I think we need to have a plan because if we don't, we end up helter skelter. Okay. Can we have a recorded vote, please? Are you ready for the vote? Yep. Mayor Clarkson, are you in favor? No. Councillor Franson? Yep. Councillor Lambshead? Yes. With the comment? No. Councillor Armstrong? Yes. Can you have a comment now or? Sure. Okay. I mean, right in this proposal, we're, we're trying to see what we can, other ways to fund this other than taxation first. So. I just want to make sure that's a vote. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so that's in the motion. And that motion has carried. Next. So that would be fire. She's getting ready to go for right in her Jeep. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and members of council. So it's three months tomorrow. <laughs> Do you want to add something to that? It's been, uh, it, it feels longer than three months and I, and I don't mean that negatively actually, that's, I just feel quite at home. But uh, I've encountered a lot of stuff in three months, so. <laughs> So the only way that I could get my head around kind of the projects that were um, kind of suspended or put on hold during 2021, partly because of COVID, partly because we didn't have the CBO here at the office to deal with them, and uh, because Adele was so busy, um, I put together a fairly comprehensive work plan. I'll be honest, it scares me a little that we might not be able to achieve it, but um, there was just some things that we had to move forward from this year to next year. And there's definitely some items that we have to do for 2022. So if you have any questions about that, you, um, I'll save that to the end. Uh, the biggest probably accomplishment that had positives and negatives, I would say, was the adoption of cloud permit. So cloud permit was um, kind of thrust thrust upon the staff and um, very daunting and challenging, but I think that they handled it really well. And having Gerald Moore from RSM to assist with that transition was pretty key to helping Derek get onto it so quickly. Um, it, it is still challenging for the public out there. I'm still, I heard one today, a comment that they're having trouble getting onto it and getting the information after we do our inspections and upload the information. So we have to work on that a little bit harder and try to work with the public to make that a little bit smoother. But on the whole, I think it's going really well. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight a few of the budget items that are obviously changes. Uh, supplies under the building budget, um, the supplies was increased quite um, by a few thousand and that was to cover some new codes for next year. Uh, there's 
quite a few code changes that are coming into effect January 1st. Um, and that generally means it's just easier to get a new updated code after you've spent the last three to four years marking up your code. So I put in for that, um, as well as general supplies for five staff people. And we do have to get some data for our tablets to be able to operate them in the areas that don't have very good internet or uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, the consultant work, uh, it was quite costly for to have RSM, but it was a very needed cost for this year. Uh, but we are gonna keep him in for $20,000 and basically that $20,000 will cover him acting as chief building official when I'm on holidays. And as well, I'm gonna use him to assist teaching me some more Bluebeam tricks, um, just to fine tune my education on the Bluebeam, which is what we use to mark up plans. The legal has increased. Um, it seems just everything involves legal these days. We have two to three really hot topics right now that we almost engage legal almost every single day. Um, I don't see that changing over this next year. Uh, it's just a different environment out there. Um, I think Steve <laughs> kind of gently alluded to it out that it's just a different it's a just it's a different environment and people expect a lot and people are going ahead and doing things without permissions and getting caught after and we have to bring legal in so we have <clears throat> increased that quite a bit just to cover make sure we have enough in there to handle the building side for for legal education is a big one i wanted to uh, send Matt and Derek on at least two to three courses next year, that, those being OBOA courses. And this is part of my succession planning for these two guys. Uh, they're actually on two courses, one course each for the next two weeks in the mornings. Um, Derek is taking his first legal course and uh, Matt's working on a large buildings course. And I'm hoping to get at least one in next year. Um, the cloud permit costs are $14,000 a year. So that's just a fixed rated cost now that we have to put into our budget yearly. Um, the transfer to general review, I did reduce that. I reduced it by 50%. And I did that because this coming year is gonna be a really challenging year for the building department. I feel we, it's gonna be a catch up year. We have a lot of um, ground to cover that was kind of let go this year and I just want to make sure at the end of the year that we are not uh, dipping into our reserve too far so I'm just going on the cautious side for 2022 and if all goes well 2022 we'll look at that number putting it back up for 2023 under planning uh, much of the budget is pretty much the same the only exception really is legal and again that that has been increased for the same reasons that I stated for building we have a, a couple hot topics that we're dealing with in the planning department right now that are going to be ongoing for a while and they are going to take some legal legal costs um, bylaw is pretty much the same and as far as permit fees go we are going to do the index cost for 2022 but I feel pretty good about the permit fees. They're pretty, they're in a good healthy state. And this is the first township I've ever worked for. I hadn't come, haven't had to come in and fix them. So um, your, your fees are in good shape. So if there's any questions. Well, you haven't run away yet anyway. <laughs> uh, council, questions? Yeah, for you. Uh, at the FCR, we're going to have some revenue and uh, there's going to be some cost. Uh, is that in the budget? Sorry, what was the it? The FCR. Short -term oh, short-term rental. rentals. Um, hopefully there's some revenue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if we get everything in place, there'll be some costs associated with that as well because it's going yeah. to cost us to, to go out there and do the inspections. I think I actually, in my report, uh, where I was detailing for a staff person, which is coming up, I think I put some fairly good detail in there about that. Um, there will be some costs associated with doing the service, so we just need to make sure that we set our fees accordingly. 
uh, Donna or or uh, Barb, what's our arrangements with the lawyer? Do we? Is it an hourly thing? Is he on a retainer? Uh, when when legal advice is becoming more and more and more important, and that's not going that's not going to change. It's going to go from one thing to another to another. Is there any way to sort of mitigate some of those costs, or are we getting the biggest bang for a buck that we can get? So through you, it's an hourly rate. I'm not aware of another way. We can have some further discussions on that, but it's an hourly rate. Okay, so retainers, that sort of thing, is that that's just something to hear about in? So through you, we can look into that further, but um, you know, I'm not aware of having a retainer for that purpose. Well, I may be not using the right the right terminology, but I was just wondering if if you get to a point of having a lawyer, not necessarily on staff, but sort of a guarantee of a certain amount of hours if, uh, I don't know, it just seems to me that it's becoming quite a an owner's cost. Well, I think that for, for myself, uh, I can say that we, we I don't call him unless I absolutely have to. Oh, I know that. Um, yeah, that's, that's, so, not, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that the, the world that we live in is becoming a lot more um, legal. <laughs> I'm actually more concerned about how much workload is coming in that it might be too much for one solicitor. Donna and I have talked about that. Um, I do have another person that I've worked with. Um, I was fortunate to work with John and another solicitor from Russell Christie um, and having them both. And the great thing about John is he's like a great municipal lawyer. Uh, the other lawyer, he was a planner before he was a lawyer. So he's like a double threat. So whenever we had like planning issues, like really intense planning issues, we would bring him in because he was wearing the planning hat as well. Um, but it's more about the workload because, you know, we're not you and O'Dwyer's only customer. So um, some things aren't coming as fast as we would like them to come. So that's more my concern. I, I, I think I can fairly safely say that we all use it, him very sparingly because <laughs> we know how expensive it is. But there's, as you know, there's some issues that we're dealing with right now that you don't want to make a wrong move. So you need that legal advice. No, I'm not, as I say, I'm not even hinting in the broadest section that, 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 the, uh, that the calls to a lawyer are uh, inappropriate. No, I un I understand that perfectly. It's just I was wondering if there's more than one way to employ a lawyer. Carol, you had a comment. Uh, I did actually. I, I my one concern um, with the departmental budget was whether or not we haven't rebuilt it enough for next year because I know there's a lot of flow through from the backlog as well as you know a level of activity that's probably going to continue high. But I think. What gave you some level of comfort is you're lowering the transfer to the general revenue. So you've got about the twenty thousand dollars coming in there, which is a big help. And uh, you know, I think you built in pretty good budgets for our bylaw and legal, et cetera, to to address some of those new issues that are coming up. So um, you know, if you are comfortable that this budget is sufficient to get the job done with with the addition uh, that you put through it, then. I, I'm very happy with this budget. Um, yep. <laughs> yes, Terry. I just have a comment about the planning advice. Like we, we budgeted twenty thousand last year, and we ended up spending thirty-two thousand change, and we only budgeted twenty-five thousand. Hoping the additional staff is the reasoning why that may be going down. Four. So we budgeted a four last year and we've spent, so far I've spent 16. I think the 20 was just put in because it was a little bit more than what we spent. So uh, I think he's actually looking at the planning advice one, Barb. So yes. the one oh, oh advice, sorry, yeah. planning advice. It's, it seems like we have quite a few planning advice reports on our agendas. So that would be the work, for instance, of Chris Jones. <laughs> 
um, I would like to use him less, <laughs> to be blunt. Uh, now that we have Sarah, and I, I'm very impressed with Sarah. Sarah is taking over variances really, really well. Um, when she speaks at your meetings and I'm listening, she's very impressive. I really want to bring rezonings back in in house. Um, and that's my goal. And I think that that's going to cut that number down a lot. I think the complicated stuff should be going to him. Uh, but the very simple, straightforward rezonings, I think we can handle them in house. And that's, that's why I've kept that number down. Thank you. And I think you're adding a bit of staff to help alleviate some people. So I, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Well, it saves time too, right? It saves a lot of time. Now, do you need a motion to accept this report, Donna? So, through you, the next, this is, Barb is presenting her budget. Okay. But so there is, the next one is an information paper that you would have to support through motion, please. Okay. So, I'll let Barb speak to that. So, this information paper is for the additional staff person, which we've already, already come to council for approval for, but originally we asked for six months. Uh, we advertised at six months and we got three applications in, but they were very inadequate. Uh, we're asking to go out for a one-year contract this time around, because I think people would be more apt to apply if it's for a year. And there's so much work that we have that we can give this individual. Um, I kind of see it to be quite honest that once the year comes to an end, we probably would be extending it. Uh, but I think going out at least for a year, we've got a better chance of getting a, better resumes in and maybe some people that live closer by. Yes. Motion to support. Carried. I'll second that motion. Yeah. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So next is <laughs> and his alarm didn't even go off. <laughs> Thank you through you, Madam Mayor, Council. Um, I guess we're at uh, our overview, eh? Is that where we're at, Donna? Yes, please. <laughs> Um, I could read this out, but if anybody has any specific questions that you'd like to uh, answer, then I can we can start with that. Through you, Mayor. I'm just wondering about a, you have a boat in your budget. Seems a little small on number. I'm just wondering what is it? Is it the that's in the capital. Yes, so we can wait till we get through this. Okay. Yep. Any questions on the overview? Seeing no hands. In my uh, increased, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, increased recruitment and retention at the bottom of the first page, um, we did hire 15 new recruits in 2021 and we'll be starting another recruitment for 2022 as well. Um, and in there, you can see that I have a, an increase of an hourly wage uh, of, and that is uh, 95 cents, but that is um, remaining with out of my budget that we already have, so to speak. So I won't be increasing the budget for that. That would put us to the middle of the road in the county, so. On wages, and it'd be a two-step wage: um, one wage for the recruit, and then after they uh, pass their recruitment, it'd go up to a firefighter wage. Do they pay for their own uh, uh, uniforms? No, we pay for it. And on the second page for our first aid training, our BLS certification, um, I had spoke to that earlier about our level of service and why we do more than just a general first aid and CPR type of uh, training. 
the bottom for the 2022 impacts of uh, purchasing deliveries and delays. I think we're all experiencing that. So um, we'll, we'll know more after January what's going to take place. But Do most people who uh, complete your training stay? Retention is a very um, difficult thing because there's a lot like we'd spoken and, and Barbara spoke. It's... <clears throat> There's a lot more expected of people today and even the term volunteer yeah. kind of gives it a false sense of what you're actually doing and we do hear from people that have been involved in a long time it's not what we signed up for because it's a full-time job for part-time pay and all that good type of stuff so the the mandate for the training and the level of service we supply it's it's daunting to to keep up with all that type of stuff but so what do you do then when somebody comes in? Do you try to give them a realistic look as what's expected of them and take kind of the romantic look away from it? Yes, so for you, Mayor, we um, we actually have a, a class. They can come in in the evening and we spell it out. If you wanna to go to the fire college and this is what you'd like to become, this is what is expected of you. So there's no surprises when you take on that role of, getting up in the middle of the night and going to help a stranger or being out in the inclement weather because 90% of our work is either too hot, too cold, too buggy, too itchy, too something. <clears throat> um, so it, it, we try and explain that right off the at the get-go um, to what is expected. And we, we do have a, a percentage on what's expected of you for calls and uh, training as well. Anybody else questions? All right. Um, through you, Mayor, is there any questions on our work plan before we get to the Mr. Lambsheads question? I don't think so. Okay. And our boat was the uh, Station 3's boat. Um, We've done a review of all of our equipment the department owns and the boat is in good working order. It has a new trailer beneath it and such. So we're gonna take the, the two stroke um, engine off it that's original and we're gonna replace it with uh, a four stroke electric start. So that's why the decrease, we're gonna keep the boat and trailer and just upgrade the motor. Thank you very much. Anybody, questions? Go ahead. Um, our operating current operating budget. Is there any questions with regards to it? I have Terry. all kinds of notes. Just, just, <laughs> I know this is an annual thing for me. It's just I'm wondering how we can get more cost recovery from some of our insulates. I know it's a difficult thing to do, and I know I don't know that there's an easy solution, but it's always something that I'd like to bring to the foreground. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Lamson, we spoke about that this morning actually at our, our staff meeting uh, in house, and that will be part of our um, cost recovery. Um, I think Jesse just did a, a um, lack of terms, a review of our um, billing and costing for our bylaw. We're looking at that, the level of service we provide. We do charge for motor vehicle incidents if you're not a taxpayer, but we get that information through the Ministry of Transportation. If it's an ATV or a boat or, or a snowmobile, it, it, it's not necessarily covered the same way to get that information. And because of the freedom of information today, it's a lot harder to collect that data. You used to go on a license plate for identification, but if that license plate doesn't belong to that individual vehicle, it, it's hard. So if they provide us that information on site for insurance and stuff, we can build back. So we're looking at uh, reviewing that policy on how we can actually collect that data and bill accordingly for our services. And with that being said, that goes with um, say the, our provincial, like our park, our wildland rescues, um, that type of thing where it takes three or four stations and four or five hours to go rescue somebody out of the woods. Uh, logistically is a, a, 
a task and it's a lot of uh, resources and staffing hours. So we're uh, working with the park with that and another department that belongs to, uh, or that helps uh, North Kortha as part of the park recovery type stuff as well. So. Thank you very much. So Steve, what happens when you go up to like a small forest fire like you did first thing last spring? Is there any recovery in that? Is that just start that's just your job? Through you, Mayor, there is cost recovery if we can find out where the cause or how it was started or who started it. Um, that's a bigger task than you would think. Um, we do have an agreement with the Ministry of Natural Resources, so we have their resources as well for investigation purposes and such. But to try and take somebody to the court where 150 acres is burnt and where it started and the wind directions changed three or four times and all that good stuff, unless there's witnesses, it's hard. So that part is absorbed through our budget. But if it's an investigation through the fire marshal's office or through the Ministry of Natural Resources, then we have all that that we can get, like have a well, cost recovery. What happens if it's on Crown land? That is up to the, the ministry to uh, investigate and charge themselves and we send the ministry a bill and get paid for our services and vice versa so we have an agreement that's what our agreement covers is a reduced rate for us to use them and their equipment and if they need us we go and bill them accordingly so we had a an eight thousand dollar bill this year but by the time it's all washed out us helping them and so on it, it works out to be about thirteen hundred dollars at the end of the year so. Yes, Carol. Thank you, Steve. Uh, two questions, Steve. One is um, the loan repayment. Is that for this station here? Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, so that is to be, um, that changes accordingly, or Donna is in charge of that and how that all works. Um, but it is to be uh, paid off by 2025. Be our last uh, payment. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and I'm going to poke at this a little bit because it confuses me. So I go to the back page of the general ledger. Uh, we budgeted last year about 79,000, this is the bottom half of the line items, for repairs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, maintenance for all of these vehicles. We've spent about $20,000 year to date. Correct. So obviously there are gonna be some more bills coming in, but not even half of what we budgeted. And then we budgeted another 79.2 thousand for next year. So is this, is the budget a formula that we use? Um, it just seems a little high to me compared to the experience of actual costs that we have. So we do have um, some bills that will be coming in at the end, by between now and the end of the year because of all our certifications come due for our trucks. So that'll be, all our safety inspections, um, maintenance, oil changes, any services. Um, they check to make sure all our tires are in good order and all that type of stuff. Um, we have had some repairs. Some of our trucks are getting older. Last year was a, uh, a light year per se because we didn't have as many public events going on, you know what I mean, that type of stuff as well. But I try and take a five-year average on what has kind of been spent. So. Everything is getting harder to get, and it costs more. And uh, last year we had, uh, the year before last, I guess we had some incidents as well that cost us a few more dollars than normal. But um, because our vehicles are custom built, certain parts can only come from certain areas as well, which usually has a a price attached to that instead of just going to Napa or something and buying the parts. That answers your question. I think it does. I mean, it just seems, you know, an eighty thousand dollar budget, twenty thousand dollars spent year to date. Um, that's a lot. Balance of year, we're not going to get sixty thousand dollars more. And so, does that suggest we really should be budgeting the same amount next year? But I understand the five year average and aberrations. So, if you're comfortable that that's not, I just don't want us to be over budgeting because that obviously impacts. We collect it if we don't need it. Right. But I think you're saying you're comfortable with that in the budget. I am personally, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
but we could do it the other way and I we could be over and I can bring a report back to council if something needs to be purchased just as well. Um, it's, I think personally, um, ours is probably low compared to for the amount of vehicles we do have uh, and because of our situation and how we get our repairs done and such. Um, I would expect in the near future that this will be higher. <laughs> No, I'm comfortable with that. I just had to push that because it, yeah. there seems such a discrepancy. That's but fine. I do understand, again, averaging aberrations, and you don't want to be caught. Nice to have a little extra money. Yes. One more little thought, and it's about hired repairs or repairs hired. Hopefully, as we complete a new dedicated mechanics facility, some of these expenses can be absorbed into that. I mean, it's 21500 for this budget alone. Hopefully some of that can be covered over with our new mechanics facility. And, and through you, Mayor, um, you're, you're correct. We've had those discussions. Um, and some of this stuff is even like the likes of, uh, it has to go to Winslow's because it's a recall, but when it's there, it needs something else that's not covered under the recall in, in that type of situation as well. But yes, no, that, uh, that is kind of in the works with us operationally. Thank you. Steve, I imagine between you and and, uh, and Evan, you probably stock a certain amount of parts that are always breaking down when the supply chain is as hard to get today as it is, or do you just don't have the spot to, uh, to store anything? Uh, through you, Mayor, I can speak for myself. We do not stock parts. Anything. No. Um, each year make and model does have a little bit of difference in it but um, for us um, for the amount of vehicles we have the the majority of what would be an issue for us does never seem to be the same thing twice but um, I can't speak for Evan they have a whole different um, operational side so to speak than and wear and tear type of situation that we would but we'll ask him when we get him up again <laughs> <laughs> Now he knows the answers to the questions. <laughs> Does that answer that, Councillor Lamson? Yes, thank you very much. Anything else for Steve? No, I think not. Thank you. Next is public works. Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> going for the test run, breaking it down for me now. I know what to expect. Um, to, you, to you, Mayor, to members of Council, before you use the operating budget for public works, um, your first page here is just sort of the description of the service. Um, I believe most of you are aware of uh, what sort of operations we do. Um, on the line, I do have Corey Campbell, who's my, one of my foremen. He sort of helps uh, assist with a lot of the work on the, the tandems and the various vehicles. He has a wealth of experience that um, I like to rely on him to sort of give me some help in the, that area. Um, so anyway, so, so just going through the overview here, um, typically the road maintenance stuff, obviously the snow clearing, sanding, brushing, ditching, that's the typical standard stuff. Um, waste management um, is just one of the things I'd like to really highlight when we're talking about some of sort of the uh, efficient and effective initiatives. Um, that food cycler program that Chelsea spearheaded has been absolutely incredibly received from what I see on Facebook and the uh, compliments from residents. Um, as all of you guys are aware, there's very rare we get compliments from the public. And when you see the public, that many compliments from the public, um, I think clearly uh, we're doing something right. So I think that's, that was all Chelsea Carpenter. She absolutely killed that program. I think it's a fantastic program. I'm looking forward to seeing possibly if we could do something again in the spring with that program, because I think it is so well received 
and with some of the seasonal res residents, there may be some interest for some of those uh, um, summer, spring, summer months. Um, some of the other initiatives we're sort of be looking at, obviously, uh, I have my PN, so I have some experience doing AutoCAD work and trying to bring some of the engineering in-house. Um, this isn't any major design, this is sort of minor design things, um, such as creating a municipal standard, um, which is a document we other municipalities have, and this is allows you to create a standard on, if you have somebody want to do a development or quarry work or something like that, you can say, this is what we expect for the road, the base, street signs, even any new subdivisions, you outline everything there. So when somebody comes to ask you, say, this is our document, this is what we expect, and then everybody's sort of on the same page that way. Um, some of the impacts and pressures from COVID, obviously, as Steve mentioned, there's uh, immense delays on getting some of the vehicles, um, some of the parts, uh, um, quite slow. Uh, and even just finding some of the prices and stuff like that have uh, increased substantially. Uh, so just to expand, I don't know if you want to ask me the question now, Janet, or not, but we do carry a large stock of sort of common filters, hoses, stuff that we can that makes sort of sense for us to carry, we try to carry. I was quite impressed when I came to Trend Lakes at the um, stockpile of hydraulic hoses that they have, because in the winter, that's one of the biggest things that breaks on the tandem trucks is things get cold, things get rubbing, things break. Um, instead of having to run especially here you run into Peterborough or Lindsay or something like that, you have it all at the one shop. So you can create your own hydraulic lines and help, um, help to assist to ensure that we're not um, losing any other level of service. Um, some of the other stuff from COVID-19, obviously is the increased demands from the residents. Um, I think everyone's aware there's more people staying at their cottages for longer periods of times. Um, and we're finding a lot more uh, requests for snow maintenance on some of the roads that previously have not received uh, winter maintenance so that's sort of one thing we're dealing with um, however I've sort of said the precedence has been set and it's sort of they if residents really want to push that way I've sort of put it back to them saying they can do a delegation to council and I'll leave it for council to make the decision and at that time I would bring a report sorry explaining the impacts of what adding that route would be um, obviously uh, yeah, just a lovely COVID, just dealing with implementing of the vaccine policy. Obviously, you have pushbacks with some of the guys, but I just want to say um, the guys really have been cooperating with some of the um, individuals that have not, unfortunately, been vaccinated. They've been very, very helpful with accommodating the testing and whatever requirements we've outlined within our vaccine policy. They've um, been following in line with that, which has really made a huge thing for me because that was a big stress of mine is how if there's going to be pushback because guys can be like that sometimes but just the guys have been incredible just um very understanding of why this needs to be done and understanding of the situation that we're in so i'm not going to read through the work plan um if anybody has any questions about that or the overview i'm here and same as the budget um, i'm not going to read through the specifics of the budget um, for the most part keeping things fairly status quo uh, we have some new vehicles that we're hoping to get, and we have some old vehicles that we were hoping that were replaced that we have not received yet. So we've had to build in a budget just in case who knows where COVID is going to go in the delivery. Maybe it gets pushed longer and then we could have some issues with breakdowns. Out. Okay, comments, questions. Okay, I have a couple. I've been commented by, or I've been contacted by people who think you're going to change the sand policy. And I spoke to you and you said, no, sand policy is going to be the same, but council would like to hear that as well, probably. Because yes, we're all so through you, to, <laughs> through you, Mayor, to members of council. So it's been, it was directed, I'm not exactly sure at what council meeting, but the Public Works provides winter sand to the fire routes. Um, within that, uh, direction of council was a specific that the sand, winter sand will be dumped off at the end of the fire route. So we're absolutely continuing that. Um, I know last week we did some deliveries. I know there's a couple more um, contractors that have just sort of, I guess, trickling through that will get a few more requests, um, but it is within that direction of council that it was a, it was to be received each year that it's not just assumed that because you got winter sand last year, you get it this year. It's sort of each year has to be a request. That's all handled through Chelsea and then she sort of creates a spreadsheet. And then uh, we have that uh, sort of work lined up for us. But we, we, I do plan on continuing to provide those fire routes with winter sand. So if council members get contact 
uh, they should get a hold of Chelsea and just say yes. Okay. Uh, second question I have: the monitors that we put in trucks years ago. Yes. Is that system still operating? And if it is, does it need to be updated? So the automatic vehicle locating system has been there. There's an older system in it, and we've been doing instead of doing one large just chunk of doing it all, we've been slowly picking away as we get new trucks. We have a new auto AVL system in those trucks. So as um, we don't need to update that new system. The new system's good. It's the old system that we're getting rid of. But as we get the new truck, we're sort of saying, okay, it makes sense. Let's do this truck now and bring it into the system. Um, one of the comfort levels I have with that system is it's the same system that I utilized in Cabin Monaghan. Um, so I already understand how to use pull reports if I need to pull reports. If you have concerns from residents about speeds of trucks, amount of sand being applied, whether this, the road was even plowed or sanded and salted, I know how to pull pull that information fairly quick. And that's sort of been one of the nice surprises, I guess, is coming here is that it was the same sort of system that it was an easy learning curve for me. Because with lawsuits, that's an extremely important. It is. Tool. It is the only one of the only tools that you really have. And when you have something, and that's one of the keys is when you're looking at your systems, it's important because you can. The courts will look at how easily it can be tampered with, right? And some of these systems operate just on an iPad sitting on the dash of a truck. Well, that's quite easy for somebody to tamper with. When you have a hardwired electronic single to the battery and it's in the chassis of the truck, it's a little harder for an operator to tamper with that. You have to be pretty dedicated to get into there. So they even, and this, this, I haven't gone through that experience, but that's just what I hear from the industry is that the courts will look at that way and say, well, you know, this person could have changed this thing or put this in their truck and drove their pickup truck and, you know, sort of stuff like that, where um, the system that we have doesn't have that and it, it, it will stand up in court. Okay, anyone else with a uh, comment? Okay, do we need a motion to receive this, Donna, or? No, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yeah. Again, it's the higher group, and I'm hoping that some of that stuff will come back in-house rather than all go out like $68,000 in your budget. Yes, and unfortunately through you, Mayor, to Councillor Lamb, said unfortunately some of the hired repairs as you get the newer equipment, and I'm sure you're aware with it, it has the computers in it, and sometimes you don't have that specific computer program because you get an error message, and the only way you can diagnose that issue is to plug the computer in. And unfortunately, um, you can't. Some of our computers don't work. But I've been the amount of repairs that our mechanics are able to complete in house, even completing all the safeties in house, is something that. From my personal experience, the, the previous township that I've come from, they didn't do safeties and house, they would send that out. So if you, we're really doing a good job and just to expand on what Steve, Steve and I have discussed in the future, just future planning of where we can do repairs. One of the big things to remember with Steve's vehicles is they, they have a certain component that it's an emergency vehicle technician and that has to have a special qualification to work on that certain parts. Some of the other parts of the trucks like oil changes we can do, but there's certain parts that there's a certain you have to basically hire that out unless you want to train somebody and when you have a fire fleet that small. But anyways, it's definitely something that we want to try to uh, improve the efficiency if it's possible. Thank you. So is that something then that you take a truck to or you bring a mechanic in? For the... For those specialized things or are they... You, the, is the technician, the technical stuff so technical that it actually rolls out on a big container? No, it, it, they, they come to, they have a service truck and they have this, because it's, it's the com specific computer program that they have, like it's like a to layman's term, it's like a Microsoft Word, but it'd be a Microsoft, like specific to CAT or specific to um, International or Freightliner, Western Star sort of thing like that. So that's how um, they come to site, they diagnose it that way sort of thing. So that's how that's done. Um, I can't speak to how the fire trucks, I'm guessing they come on site and it's the same sort of thing, right? Well, if that's the case, Terry, we don't need to build them anything. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny little part of that. <laughs> okay, uh, anyone else? Questions? I think, I think we've learned a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, recreation and facilities. They can't. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to talk that age anymore.
Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, you've got before you my budget overview. Um, I think you guys are pretty familiar with all the things we do. Um, so some of the uh, efficient and effective initiatives uh, that we kind of uh, completed in uh, 2021 was uh, we've implemented a lot of our um, you know, what would normally be paper inspections or, or just visual inspections into our, our mesh suite. Um, so, you know, that's where all of our quarterly reports are drawn from. So we can, we have, we have a record now of basically of the things we're, things we're doing. So we want to go back and look at something. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things we started tracking this year was uh number of people and cars at Sandy Beach. So um, in the future, I would like to be bringing forward a business case for, um, you know, maybe some revenue generation at that site um, because it is so busy. Um, uh, we've got a truck that I, I mentioned should be coming. I did hear back while I was sitting off to the side here, expected delivery date is November 22nd. So I hopefully that holds up. Um, you know, that being again, like Evan and, and Steve, that's one of the challenges of, COVID is uh, nothing comes when it's used to. Um, we, we implemented a lot more, uh, a lot of our SOPs um, this year, kind of uh, streamlining the training process for staff. So we spend a couple of weeks with them and really grinded out all the things that are expected and how we want to do it. Um, it kind of gives a little bit slower start to when they're on the ground working, but once they are, they're going full bore. Um, and it's not going to send in a supervisor or someone else back to, to fix the stuff um, the second time around. So we're, they're all uh, all up to speed when they start. Um, we're going to continue with uh, developing SOPs and training modules um, for next year, um, further implementing mesh stuff, uh, generator and life safety, safety system inspections. Um, are all of our health and safety inspections. We're going to uh, get them formalized in there as well. Um, we're going to be implementing our recreation maintenance policy, which council passed uh, a month or two ago. Um, we began in 2021 using um, rented equipment from actually from Home Depot, um, little skid steers, uh, tractor loader backhoes, take some of the back breaking work out of staff. The advantage of Home Depot being is they, they rent a float with it for you. Um, and so that's that saved countless hours and of uh, backbreaking work for the guys and girls this this time around. Um, continuing to look at uh, our different day-to-day -day tasks, such as watering baskets and picking up garbage, how we can do it more efficiently. Um, you know, based on geographics, we're limited somewhat, but uh, you know, implementing new techniques is something we're always striving to do. Um, as well, we're going to be Putting back on the table the uh, implementation of a booking software at the community centers, all of the community centers had a drive to buy into that, N not to physically buy in, but uh, a willingness to use a system like that. Um, that way we can communicate with each other. You know, if Lakehurst has a certain event on a day, um, it would automatically be in the, the computer system. Um, so we know don't plan any work at that site for that day. Um, alleviate some of the uh, times where either they get to site and we're working or we get to site and they've got an event on um, and having to rewrite the day just for um, a little bit better communication there. Um, work plan, is there any, I guess, is there any questions on my overview? Sorry. Silence is a good thing. <laughs> um, my work plan this year is quite a bit more condensed than in years past, um, trying to just stick to the big ticket items. Um, and in particular planned a little bit less from my end, knowing full well that things like ODNANG and PRCAC initiatives um, and you know some of the, the larger requests like the Galway kitchen and stuff are gonna be coming forward. These are some, you know, some larger projects that were gonna require a little bit more oversight from staff. Um, but uh, some of the big ones, um, uh, the the naming policy that's uh, that's underway. Um, hopefully, uh, in early second quarter uh, for that for for the larger um, naming of buildings and areas and and what have you. Um, Odenang Pavilion um, and Oden, other Odenang improvements, which we've we've talked about. That's going to come back to uh, EDAC. Um, 
the Open Spaces RFP um, as uh, approved by Council through the PRCAC um, to include things like parks and trails and uh, all of our, our open spaces to hire a consultant for that. Um, and then, yeah, just our, our annual facility condition assessments and continuing for next year's budget. Any questions on the work plan? When do the Christmas lights go up? Um, <laughs> oh, it's on the work plan for next week. The guys are trying to, they're dying. They want to do it early. So within the next two weeks. We're trying to get the electric uh, fixed at the, uh, at the little pavilion so that you can light it up. So you can go yeah. ahead and put the lights on one way or the other. We will get power to that. Okay. I've got, I think Maddie's going to be calling around to a few people too. He's to uh to see if he can figure out who's got that but if you've got if you hear anything let me know well with the fellow that uh, has worked with us really well for parks is back with parks mm -hmm. so if it's something that needs to be opened up from the uh from locks we can probably get that done now i wouldn't be surprised if there isn't a breaker in there that's uh, that's been thrown probably um uh largely my operating budget is uh unchanged at this stage um lowered a bit of the budgets in the parks area uh, mostly accommodating for um we built in for a fairly big increase for um, portable toilets and we found with our new contractor we didn't need them as much as we i had planned um so i've knocked a knocked a few thousand off in that department um got to say that that uh, definitely is a good thing that we did going with the new contractor um i've could count on one hand how many complaints i've had this year and in previous years i'd need all my figures and toes <laughs> so um good good move there um yeah other than that if there's any questions on any of the other items um i the library um again i think they're coming in the january meeting donna um so that number in there is just uh a best guess that I put in at this stage. So that, that number very easily could change depending on what Stephanie brings forward. Um, and that that's, you know, that's something that usually comes out right at the bang at the start of the year. So when my budget looks way overspent in the first quarter, it's usually that's why. The fence at uh, Sandy Beach looks good. It does, it turned out very well. And they are gonna come back, um, I got them to withhold um, a small percentage to come back and finish the top dressing around because that was part of their contract and they just couldn't get her done. So I withheld a bit of that and they're going to come back in the spring and dress it up. Um, if there's no questions on that, um, I have a budget information paper which uh, council's kind of uh, given approval in principle for um, this. Oh, sorry. 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 Can I ask you yeah. Um, oh, library. Um, just wanted to confirm that, that that is the budget amount that was approved by the uh, library board, and it represents about a 3% increase over last year so far. So that's what you'll be looking at, um, not a huge increase, and no drawing down of any reserves. So uh, that number's pretty sound. <laughs> oh, that's that 240 is? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that's so convenient because that's what I also put it. Uh, the other thing was uh, uh, Deer Bay Hall. Yeah. I know we've bounced this one around. Um, it is costing us money, not a lot, but probably more than the $50,000 a year to keep this thing going. Um, so it's something I think council needs to address in, in the next year is to do we keep you know, paying for a building that's not being occupied um, sure. or do we occupy it or do we sell it? But I, I think. Council will need to, to look at that in the new year. Yeah, for sure. Through you, Mayor, um, it, it's mostly insurance that's costing us there. Um, we've, we're basically shutting every the roofs on it now, so it's dry. We're basically just keep the pests out, and it's in a basically dormant state. That's basically how we're trying to keep it, keep this as low as possible at this stage. Um, so yeah, looking looking for council direction in the new year for that for sure. Thank you. um budget information paper uh like i was saying council is uh you know approved this in principle we're working with shrp to develop the uh the job description um donna did include some preliminary preliminary numbers in the first portion of the uh, uh the report there um 
the, the net uh, levy impact uh, based on those numbers being at just shy of 59,000, um, all inclusive of the, the benefits and whatnot. Um, so it's just, you know, formalizing that in the form of a, a budget paper as, as we discussed. And like I said, uh, a budget uh, or a job description is underway. And once we've got that, we can do the, uh, the job evaluation tool and and figure out the, the hard numbers but we're, we're pretty confident in where we've placed that at this stage um i guess does do we need separate motions for the how does this work separate would be better for, for the, the budget budgets. information papers okay i'll make a motion to support and do we have a seconder uh, Councillor Lamptey, all in favor? Motion is carried. Carol, when the uh, library was closed as much as it was this year, why did their budget not go down? We had built into the budget, I think, COVID already, because it happened in 2019 and knew that it was going to be closed and we would have a real decrease in, in revenue. Okay. So 3%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we need another motion for um, recreation facility coordinator. No, that's, that's no. So the the last budget information paper, I believe, uh, Councillor Armstrong um, submitted this one. Um, something that was was on our radar there, but uh, I guess this is for a uh, maybe Carol. You're better to speak to this one. I'll let you do. Your yeah, name's on it. You can go. So well. <laughs> um, I'm thinking I should really this because I mean the strategic plan was something different but this was very specific to some of the recreation facility priorities and I think I should leave it to that committee to come forward with their requests and if this is at the top of the list great if it's not then you know, they, they need to make that recommendation so long way of saying I'd be helpful to go at this stage. Okay, the next one, I guess, is... So the last section of the budget is revenue, and that's just for Council's information. All of those revenue streams and sources have been contained already in the individual budget, so I just wanted to provide it to you as a whole as well. So that well is when the, when the um, uh, so many of the convention things have been the, uh, virtual for the last year or so, a couple of the uh, of the townships are actually allowing their people to take more than one uh, delegation, not delegation, but uh, you know what I mean. People to delegates to go to the to go to the uh, Roma and Ogre and whatever. Is there any room in the budget for us to do the same thing? So you went back then. Our our council expense claim policy does it addresses conferences as well given that policy that uh councils to attend one conference a year i believe the background of that was the budget implication um however next year i believe rome is the only one that is virtual Councilor armstrong is attending i believe the other ones are all back to in person so those um fees will go back up next year and we haven't um changed the budget for council expenses for conferences for COVID at all so we didn't save any of that money last year. Through you, there was some savings. However, we've also offered some additional training courses um, that some council members have taken. Um, but if there's anything you're interested in, and it is virtual before the end of the year, let okay. us know. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on? So our next meeting is going to be for budget is uh, January the 26th at 9 a.m. We'll hook something on Ron and drag him up. Now we need to uh, get a motion to approve the confirming bylaw and a seconder. Councillor Franson, Councillor Lambshead, all in favor. Motion is carried. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Lambshead, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor. And thanks to everyone. You've done a great job. And I just, I would not even, I wouldn't want it. So. A lot of work. <laughs>
It's a lot of work, and you come by with it with a with an explanation that we can understand, and this is good.